Oh, dead spot. <sighs> if only you could switch in an instant. Go oh, wait. What? Isim is that easy? Fur fur. For real, kasi. Backed up by nationwide coverage. So, yeah, nobody knows what Gen Z's want, but we can keep up with real connection and real fast data. Live for real with Smart 5G plus nationwide LTE, Power Off, Magic Data, and eSIM. You guys pretty much know what we need. Live more today. Princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. For your queen. It won't take long, I promise. Transferi natin. Class, meet your new classmate, Felicissimo. Moy na lang po. Lisa, kay mo muna si Moy ha as you're just to our school. Thank you, Iha. Okay, everyone, bring out your social studies textbooks. Thank you, Melka. Pero ako start ko pa lang eh. Nug pa ako, saka new berin dito. Sus, school um, el, ako pa ala sa yung. Nari lang to. Road to meeting agad tayo. Pakinggan mo lang ako. Rule number one, let your personality show. Pakita mo kung sino ka, be. Perfect na perfect. Rule number two, find a good school-life balance. Study hard, play hard. Yes! Ang galing na! One. <laughs> Rule number three. Basic lang galawan dito. Basta alam mo prayo. Magpataba para lumakas. More kain, more energy. Rule number four. Pag may humamon, game on! Huwag matakot sa flash. Kita ka namin sa map. Auto rest back. Oh, diba? 
basic. Kung sino mag-rung up, basta sama-sama. Thanks, Lodi. Ano? Laro? Gym! Guys, next week na tournament. Game tayo, ha? Sige, basta ako ang tank, ha? Gold day na MM ako, ha? Expelli na ako. Kaso... Nag-last day na nga pala si Kyle. Okay, guys. Please welcome Mimi, our new teammate. Hi, Mimi. Good to have you, Mimi. Hello. Please take the empty desk. Thank you. Hi, welcome sa department. Ah, oh, thank you. Baka gusto mong sumali sa team namin. Meron kaming ML Tournament. Ah, hindi ako nag-game sa sorry. <laughs> um, turuan kita. Gusto mo? Madali lang naman. Tsaka parang team bonding na rin tayo. Uh, pwede naman, pero hindi ako nag-game sa as in zero knowledge talaga. G lang. Magkukura ako, bubuhatin kita. What? Five seconds till the enemy reaches the battlefield. Smash them! Oh, Mimi, dito ka lang sa tabi ko, ha? Oh, my word! Oh, boss, tayo tayo, ha? Def lang, def lang. GG, bawi na lang next time. Nice game, guys. Later na ako. Focus lang yan, Mimi. You're making progress naman, eh. Basta, focus ka lang sa atin. See ya. Sa atin? May kami na ba? Mimi, sa tournament, dapat masanay tayo gamitin yung in-game chat. Ah, okay. Okay. Mimi, yung turtle! Oh, sorry, 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 sorry! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Uy, nice presentation kanina! Oo oh, nice one! Siyempre, para Grabe. tapos agad! Hello. Uy, Mimi! May new skin yung Esme, oh! Kit ng fit niya! Try mo kaya! Pwede naman! Sinong cute? Uy, sinong cute? Yung skin, yung skin! Ay, yung skin! Uno! Pero cute nga! Getting serious. Victory! Yeah! Nice one, Bro. Yes, one. 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 Yes, Sa bahay, magdadalulo sa Team Pro Max. Huh? Ah, di ko pa alam eh. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto mo mag-coffee sa tupan?
golden sun and ripping for the three stars Look could us to the top, no ifs, no buts Winning in game, but it does appear in the yes Di mo mati pinagaming bosses on your level Nasa kalye man no more, well you know I become a legend Open fire, we unite the winners Built with pressure, the diamonds are made of Switching a lane na parang era, HP racing way we set up Built like a tank buhat ni heal that full load that says parang lila Susundan ko ang iyong bakas Kasama pa taas na gumpay na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Nasa amin ang nalas Hindi hindi ko waatras Kinikilala sa taas kasi kami ang malakas Lacking every beat, the surrender no retreat But next time a summer, just imagine what we can achieve Lacking every beat, the surrender no retreat Giving hundred all my all, cause we just cannot be defeated We are unstoppable, immune and invulnerable Ready, young equipment, lahat frozen, my luck, crowd control Pakita ko na jab like, pow! Beast of the Southeast Tapas sa watawa, proud and loud Cause every enemy we devour Susundan ko ang iyong bakas Kasama pa taas na gumpay na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Nasa amin ang nalas Hindi hindi ko waatras Kinikilala sa taas Kasi kami ang malakas For the three stars The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at slashevent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Four PM MPL, 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 Catch your favorite MPL matches every Friday to Sunday. Only at the MPL Philippines YouTube and TikTok. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na.
kaligayang pagdating sa tahanan ng pinakamalalakas na Mobile Legends Bang Bang players sa buong mundo. I'm Mara Aquino. And my name is Hans Galeria. And this is MPL, MPL Philippines, Philippines Season 13. Unti-unti nang nabubuo ang storya ng regular season after witnessing three weeks of action-packed matches. Huh? Real ka dyan, Mara. May nakita tayong mga umakyat at mga bumababa sa kanila mga standings pero nanatili pa rin sa tuktok ang defending champions na AP Bren. That's right. Now that we're on the halfway point of the regular season, remember, seven weeks lang tayo bago mag-playoffs. So, paano naman kaya mababago ang kapalaran ng ating mga kupunan? You know, I can't wait to find that out. And we all can't wait na makita yan. So, we are going to find that out right now as we kick off our matches for this week. Simulan na natin ang ating bakbakan. Casters, Faso. What's up, brothers? Special teams, special players, special teams. Oh, I said teams way too much. My name is Umi. With me here is Leo and Wolf. We're going to be your casters for this weekend. Maligayang, welcome to the home of the strongest Mobile Legends bag bag players in the world. How are you guys doing today? Hey, uh, I'm, uh, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling thin lately. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I heard you, you suffered quite a bit with a stomach flu. Are, are you still fine? Yeah, I sh uh, yeah, just... Standing side by side with you guys, I'm really okay. Oh, thank you so much, Wolf. And you know, with your uh, undefeated streak in your stomach flu game, <laughs> AP Brand is still undefeated, entering the halfway point of the regular season. Still quite the contender when we're talking about the MPLPA Championship. Very close call. Almost got one over them. Was Echo last week. And I gotta say, watching that game three, I was at the edge of my seat. Here's a look at the standings again. Where are we currently? Still AP Brand number one. Wow. In Echo number two, already just trailing behind AP Brand two points. And this is something that we did not expect. Onik in number three. There were rumors yep. about Onik Philippines not having the synergy that they need to succeed yep. here in the regular season. But right now, I feel like they're proving a lot of people wrong. Yep, I'm one of those who doubted Onik Philippines' strength or power level at the start of the regular season just because of their loss in the first week. Like the first day that they played, they actually played so badly that you're going to doubt them, but now they have proven me wrong. Oh, hey, yes. All it took was them two series exactly. to find their groove, and now I'd say they're on top. I doubt they'll ever drop from top four. Yeah, and uh, the synergy between Keller and King Kong, honestly insane. But right now we're talking about TNC and Omega Ooh. for our first series, both in the lower half of our standings, uh, seventh and eighth to be exact. Omega yet to find a victory inside a match. And after that will be Blacklist versus RSG who had drastic movements inside the leaderboard last week. Let's talk about TNC and Omega here. Seventh and eighth seed teams already in week four. It's gonna be a hard time time for Ooh, them in the regular super season. Super difficult. And I'm also actually surprised for Omega to be in this spot, especially because of how many good players that they have. They, they have a very deep, let's just say, a veteran pool in their, their side, and then they're suffering these uh, defeats. And unfortunately for TNC, although they won one game, they only have won games in that particular series. So mm -hmm. even in their losses, they weren't able to get any points. Even just one point is always O2. So that's why they are in the bottom part of our bracket. Yeah. And uh, for Omega, they have only scored a point, yeah. a singular point. And now it's an actual fight for victory because Ooh. it's going to be a tough, tough time for both teams here moving forward inside this regular season, considering that I would say adjustment period has ended already. Yep. Uh, and again, one of the things going for uh, of the Bagong Barangay would be a call-up from MDL. They're sending Exhort over to the Developmental League and they're calling up a face that is familiar yes. to the Phoenix Army. One of their players from previous seasons, Ukir, is now joining Smart Omega. And if I'm not mistaken, he is part of this lineup playing here today. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, it's very interesting to see that Ukir, in his time in Omega Neos, the uh, MDL squad of Omega, he actually worked so hard that they were in, I think, second place after four weeks. Oh, yeah. So this time around, hopefully, he could bring something new to the new Barangay. Yeah. There's always a benefit of having a new flavor. Sometimes, you forget what your main strengths are as a team just because of how comfortable you are together. Sometimes you lose confidence in your teammates just because you're losing so much in the regular season. And a change like this, like having a new player means that you're having a new flavor in town and maybe the uh, ambience of the team kind of is different. Mm. And look at this. Heads, the young Phoenix, 
surprisingly, uh, I wouldn't say surprisingly, honestly, one of the best XP laners right now in our league, all of the way from the amateur scene of the Philippines now, just wreaking havoc in the uh, professional scene. Going into season 13, it was clear that Phoenix was, uh, that the young Phoenix heads was going to have a lot on his shoulders, given that one of their other rookies in TNC Pro Team this season, Nomad has a switch up, has yeah. Yasuo to lean on, and we've seen that switch up happen several times in season 13 already, but Nomad uh, can rest easy knowing that. Heads, on the other hand, no, it's just heads all the way. Yep. And he, it came to a point where there is a week where his heroes are target bad, particularly the Ooh, Benedetta, right? Yeah. When when he performed, even him in the losses that TNC played, you saw how impactful Heads was. And there's no wonder why people are now putting the spotlight on this kid. Yeah, quite notorious on his Benedetta. I would say almost all of our great XP laners out there are actually play a lot of Benedetta. You could talk about knots, talk about Heads. Yeah. These are people that are insanely good on so. Honestly, who do you think will win this match? Uh, I'm wondering something else, man, because before we even get into TNC vs Omega, I'm wondering if you guys already tuned in to our official YouTube streams and if you're already commenting hashtag TNC or hashtag OMG. That's right, I'm talking to you right now. Just put in your game server uh, and uh, game ID and server ID to get a chance to win, all right? That's yeah. for you. And that's 500 diamonds. You don't get that for free. Only here in our YouTube stream, you could get that. Right now, we will welcome in our marshals who will officiate the match. They ensure the fairness and integrity of our games. Let's all welcome uh, Kuya Chico, Jeff, Patrick, and Wilbert. And for the people asking what Kuya means, it's typically an older brother. Now, let's meet the players from the match of TNC Pro Team and Smart Omega. From the ashes and from the dead, their flames burn bright red. Phoenix fam and army alike, all rise for TNC Pro Team. Rome was not built in a day. Here is another chance to rebuild and reclaim. Here to play, sila ang bagong barangay. It's smart. Omega. their coaches, Coach Ben Things and Coach Snap. The action in week four begins now. The first match is well on its way and we're going to welcome TNC Pro Team. We have Nomad, Ryzen, Hatred, Hats, and Super Yoshi. And they will retain this lineup that was actually the lineup that gave them the victory back in week number two. But now, after week three's performance, coming out from TNC Pro Team, a lot of people are starting to doubt the medal of this team. But now, let's see if they can bounce back. This is going to be 
even a tough, a, a tough challenge, even mm -hmm. when they're facing up a team in the lower part of the standings. And they're going up against Smart Omega, the new Barangay, with H2O playing and Okir all the way from MDL. I like how week after week, despite time ticking, mm. slowly but surely, Smart Omega are still finding out this might be it. The new injection of new talent. Ukir all the way from the MDL stepping in, much yep. like a to your left moment against <laughs> TNC. Yep. yep. And now looking at the team head to head, Wolf, can you run down uh, through Ooh. these stats? Well, I think um, at this point, because of how many losses these two teams have had, the stats might not be the best way to describe how they are. One thing that I do want to take note is the KDA that's a little bit hedged towards uh, the side of TNC. And this is mainly because of the fact that TNC are really good at their early game. While mm. for Omega, one thing that they haven't have figured out is their early game. There wasn't any game for Smart Omega that has you know, has them uh, winning in the early stages oh, of wow. our matches. And uh, that's a tough one for Smart Omega, considering that the early game teams are the ones winning right now in Absolutely. the league. Early game is such a crucial part of uh, of all of our series here, considering that most of the time we just get snowball after yeah. snowball. But right now we are looking at two Tanta players here. It's the Infinix keys to victory. Wolf, what, what, what can you see here? Well, we can see... Goyo, I think we're gonna be playing for TNC. You have to back on his experience for how many times he has been playing in this league that we have. And now we have to we now will see how what Okir's got, what yeah. the, the MDL star player for Omega Neos has in uh, in store for us and show us something new for the side of TNC as well as Omega. Maybe this is the week where we're gonna see Chip. Oh, Who knows? We we saw some chip bands last week. Mm -hmm. So we, we could be going on this route, and I would actually like to propose that actually be the trick. You know, why stop a chip? I'd like to see a Louis Yi on the other end, and, and then chip a chip on the, on the other, you know? And for MPLPH, we have a live stream viewer reward available. Come and watch the MPL matches in TikTok to join the goodie bag lottery and be one of the lucky winners. Let me run you through the steps, folks. Just go to TikTok, number one. Number two, go to the MPL Philippines TikTok channel. It's at MPLPH underscore official. Click the official live stream and the number four, just click the top left corner to join the goodie bag lottery. Bob's your uncle. Wow. Imagine watching MPL on TikTok and winning or free stuff. That's a good time for a lot of people. But I'm wondering about the drafting right now. You think it's going to be a good time here for Coach Snap considering that uh, uh, he's up against Ben Thinks. I would say still one of the smartest minds here in the professional scene. And uh, Snap, even if he has been uh, quite the contender in the amateur scene, eh? Yeah. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this is his first season in the professional league. I think that, okay, I think that he was part of some of the uh, MPL. There, there was one part for MDL at least. Yes. Yeah. For MPL, this might be his debut. And it is uh, very important because now they're, this is like a panic button actually. Oh. For the side of Omega. And that's also very good for, for TNC. Everybody has to hit that, that panic button now. And um, the fact that Smart Omega are just, you know, looking for all of the options possible at their arsenal to win against TNC. Yeah, and now oh, there's a chip ban. Yeah, now a chip ban too. TNC will be playing in the blue side and red side will be going to the hands of Omega. Looking okay. at the bans right now, Wolf, uh, there is quite the spread here coming yep. in from TNC. Especially because of the ex Borg as well as the Rafaela. Rafaela is uh, one of the famous uh, picks coming up from Omega because of Rebo and his, uh, I guess, strength and utility. Roamers. Uh -huh. And interestingly, the chip has been easily uh, been immediately banned out. This might be the flavor of the week. Ooh. But what they do know is that the Masha is open. Oh and yeah. TNC. <laughs> you know what else is open? What else? Matilda. Matilda. Oh, Roger Gold Lane as well. It's oh. open. There's a lot of power picks open for both yep. squads here, but Blue Side will get first dibs. Yep. Uh, what's the prediction here? I think Matilda. I think uh, Matilda just makes a lot of sense because Wait, imagine if it. Omega just picks up what? Joy Angela Matilda. Like you get the Masha, but that's a. Uh, that's a very strong combo within those three heroes. I think uh, the, the, the priorities will be Masha or Matilda, but uh -huh. I'm leaning more towards a Matilda. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm leaning towards a Matilda too. 80% contention rate for across the regular season. And if you're up against a Matilda, even if you're running a Masha, it's extremely hard to yeah. catch exactly. anyone. This is two out of three hot picks are open. And... Wolf is right. If you don't yeah. pick up any of these, the Angela's bound to get picked up here. So yeah. are we saying Angela Rebo here? Yeah, I guess. And it's also a flex pick, right? But uh -huh. this can be picked up by any other member of Omega. Oh, here? Oh, in his debut yep. game? Yeah. Mm, who knows? That's true. That's true. And Masha as well is open. 
And um, um, Masha with the Angela, do you think this is it for the side of Smart Omega? Yeah, because they can always leverage for the Joy as their third pick. And imagine that, Masha, Joy, Angela, Ooh, that's difficult to deal with. Even you, if you're a Matilda, obviously you can you save your teammates, but instead it's going to be a classic for Omega. Famous Fredrin. Uh, big swerve here coming in from Omega, locking in the Fredrin with the uh, with this uh, Faramis. Yep. And I would say that this Faramis is a big steel pick as well coming in for the side of TNC because for sure. if there's one combo that I dislike going up against, it's going to be the Mathilda and Faramis. You can't yeah. kill anyone. Well, you can go Valentina eventually for TNC. So you still get both? Yeah, <laughs> just get both. That's true. <laughs> yep. Um, however, you still need to pick up your, uh, your jungler now. TNC. I'm thinking like maybe actually Claude, immediate pickup for Ooh. TNC, and then somewhere along the lines of a Barretts, right? Barretts Matilda, classic combo. Oh, yeah. good. So it's, it makes a lot of sense. There it is. The CC instead is the pick for uh, TNC. I like this. Uh, Leo, You, I think you played the Barretts a bit uh, in RG. Do you think uh, going up against uh, a Faramis is good with the Barretts? It's okay. Uh, again, the, the fact that you're mobile now with the Matilda, and you, oh, very, yeah. you rarely get the Matilda. That's true. So you have a solid trio already. I'm not even thinking yep. of what's going to be in mid. As long as you have the Matilda and uh, Ryzen says go, you're yep. fine. Mm. Yep. The sacrifice here for TNC though, picking up the CC, it's actually pretty good. Like uh, we kind of missed that one, especially with the Xborg being banned. You're not that worried. But that means that you, the Claude might be banned, which is great. Should be great versus the Faramis. Now Omega can just pick up the Akari uh -huh. here. Carry Far uh, Faramis, <laughs> pretty good. Unit awaiting orders, there she is. They're going to go for the carry instead. One of the more popular tank melters in the game. Yep. The Lilia is still open, but I uh, do think that Faramis Rome is a uh, dying breed right nope. now. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, it it's not going <laughs> to do what you need it to do. Yeah. And I think it's going to be very easy to punish from Be Coach Ben yep. things. And Lilia is good for TNC, though. So this might be bad because uh, Lilia is okay versus the Faramis uh, extra shields and Frederick kind of hates. That kind of those kind of heroes where it's like almost a poke, but it hurts, you uh -huh. know. And there's always a way for you to, to, to kind of be uh, refreshed because of the purify plus the black shoes combo. Although we've seen the Fred with one hit the Lilia before, right? Oh yes. Yeah. But yeah, this, it's still a pretty good ban if, if ever for Mega. Yeah. And now moving way. forward with Even the banning phase, they're going to the take out the, the Vexana. Yep. I, I do think that this is the most popular mage right now across the board in MPL Philippines Season 13. <laughs> Horology is my craft. Diggy is my name. Yep, uh, Vexana currently number five uh, among oh. top picks. Uh, a whopping 24 times. Wow. Uh, across uh, 54 total games. Wow. So that's a majority. Yeah, yeah and looking majority. at the stats coming in from Ryzen as well, uh, do you think uh, Ryzen's stats right now is uh, stellar or is it in between? I think um, I think it's good in a way that it's 1.92 means that you get two out of the three turtles. Almost every game. That's more than half. That's more than half, which is pretty good. You can't get half turtle, yep. though. Yeah, you can get a half turtle. <laughs> half yeah, a turtle right. is no turtle at all. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> moving forward with the bands, they're going to take yep. away the Diggy. I think yep. a Diggy and a Faramis together <laughs> is uh, extremely frustrating to go up against with. Yep. And the, the sorry, the Lilia that we talked about, it's going to be banned out by Omega. Oh. The kids are going to be looking to ban the Rebo heroes now. Uh, so this is Hacker Rebo so far. Yeah. It's interesting that TNC are attacking Rome and Omega are attacking mid. I was yeah. expecting for them to do exactly what you said. Wolf, just yeah. take out the Claude. Exactly. But they seem to be okay with that. Yeah. Mm. Maybe they're prepared. Uh, what what kind of preparations do you do if you're yeah. going up against a Claude anyway? Maybe uh, you, band, uh, you, you go Tigreal or Grok for Omega. And honestly, for TNC, it's much better if they ban out the Grok at this point. It's uh, um, obviously one of the good heroes. But it's uh, Angela. We talked about this. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to take away the Angela from Rebo. And yeah. I do remember that Rebo's last performance in a regular season of MPL was using an Angela That's with true. a 1-1, which I remember was still with Kelra in Omega. That's, uh, that, that was last season. I think uh, Rebo played recently with the Rafaela. So. Did he? Yeah, this season, yep. First week, if I'm not mistaken, uh -huh. or second week. I see. And uh, the Rafaela, uh, notorious for its uh, movement speed, not even the heels. Yep. The movement speed that it gi it gives to the team. I think if we were talking about the Rafaela, we always remember <laughs> Spider Miles coming own. in from NXPE. Yep. But look at this. The Arlet locked in for the side ah. of Omega. And I do think that this is going to be still a flex pick. Yep. yep. Does not reveal anything. Yep. I'm thinking for TNC, they can just go for the Valentina. Just makes a lot of sense here. Fire Slash is great. The 
uh, Nether Realm is great. Uh, you have so much damage that you uh, that you kind of can dive the, the carry, the and it is Valentina. Oh, there you go. And then a Claude it just makes a lot of sense here for yeah. TNC. Do it, Boronias. You, yep. you said it already, Wolf. The, the Valentina could be an option here for the side of yep. TNC. Now they have an access to a Mathilda with a Nether Realm. Yep, that's right. Put on Roby. Come on. <laughs> that, that's is this, that's, is, his, that's his real name. That's his real name. Roby. Yep. What, what's his surname? The game. Well, oh, Roger. That doesn't matter anymore no. because Roger will be the pick for TNC Pro yep. Team. And that's going to be in the gold lane. Florin. Oh. Florin sitting at a 0% win rate, folks. In season 13. When, when was the last time that Florin won? I don't like, even remember. Like, I think it's uh, in the hands of Ogwen back in, um, in in the international scene. Probably. Likely. Uh, likely. So, uh, well, it's uh, it's decent because it's uh, it falls under that utility kind of roamer, which is uh, always always something that Roger hates. Roger hates healing, uh -huh. basically, because uh, he wants to make uh, take advantage of the. Uh, of the you know when when he is able to smell when somebody's yeah. low. Oh yes, bloodlust basically. Bloodlust. Blood yeah. yeah. And now with a zero percent win rate, of Florin. Hopefully, Smart Omega finally finds their path to victory. But it's gonna be hard going up against TNC Pro Team here, especially with heads rising as their new star player. And who would have thought? that uh, someone from Amateur would be the one carrying the banner of the Phoenix Army entering this match. We don't know just yet if he's capable of putting all the hopes and dreams of all the other nine members yeah. oh, of yeah. Smart Omega on his back just yet. Maybe this here, his debut, his re-debut in the league might give us the answer we're looking for. And we're just about to see as game one starts. Let's talk about the early game here, folks. Do you guys think the TNC Pro Team could potentially take the early game with this Mathilda? Yeah, absolutely. Especially with Roger Mathilda, and then you have the Bats. Yeah, they do have very strong early game. Mm. And if, you if you're if you playing this right as the Valentina, you'll get level 4 a little bit faster, or at least the same speed as the Faramis. So that really just couples off your strength in the early stage, especially in the... Uh, uh, objective taking potential. Yeah, and now Heads just asserting dominance here in the XP lane, especially with the CC, one of the best uh, 1v1 laners if we're talking about the XP lane right now. Interesting. Like, the, the Lantern of Hope is still yet to be given to someone else. Oh. Nice okay. pull here in the mid lane. And uh, looking at the mid lane, those slight uh, trade up here from Goyo and Ukir. Big rotation going towards the XP lane. Are we going to see a fight? Oh, well, here's one. Possibly it's waiting to happen. Ryota keeping up the heals from Rebo. I mean, there's one good way to use the Florin. Yeah, yeah. just making sure that your laners are safe. Ryzen out, about to hit level four. Denies H2 out of his level four power spike and continues to harass H2 inside his jungle. Yeah. Ever since um, MPL season nine, I have not seen like Hatred and Ryota together in a game. And I'm actually just surprised that TNC decided to not play Hatred up against uh, Omega today. All right, still a little bit of nugget there, but now we can feel heads just, you know, being ahead of the curve. This is the main strength of the CC. Just laning stage-wise, it's super strong. Oh yeah, super strong against this uh, Arlet, especially pre-level four, I would say. The access to the final slash is something that we have to wait for this Arlet, but now the turtle being started here by the Phoenix Army. Already less than a fifth of its health, quickly bursting it down. Three major objective for yep. the Phoenix up top. Yoshi spots H2, still not hit reaching oh level four. What's he gonna do here? Oh, the duo! Go for the Forces red tree. out the red tree. Now Yoshi catches oh! the appraiser draft. Retreating using Job! Job! Big J misses! Maybe two or three more hits. They're fine now. Check us out, Ryzen going for the steal. The collapse, four members. Then is welcome. Plus the stolen away ult. Goyo wailing away. Stun in one, Ukir. Ryzen! Not have an ult here. Ryzen very low. TNT one more! Pushing them back. Ryzen goes down first, blood drawn by the new general. And yeah. now the Barangay with the first blood. Still, the gold lead is in the hand of TNC Pro Team. The TNC, that was, that was really well done coming out from Super Yoshi. That he's able to delay H2, and that actually allowed TNC to get the turtle for themselves free. However, Ryzen had this overconfidence of getting the, still the retribution and Ooh. getting the purple buff. Super Yoshi just pokes at this point. But yeah, I mean, 
Ryzen did oh! take it. Oh! He's been trying to get away. Oh! Man. This is not that's free. That's a combo. Oh, wow. This is that, not that free. is by far my favorite Fredrin combo. Dash yeah. into a taunt. You cannot yeah. escape that. What was Yoshi thinking? I mean, he was playing the Mathilda. Sometimes you get overconfident with the amount of shields, the amount of dashes that you have, and then you just suddenly bite the dust, you know? I mean, this early on, you're not making enough shields nor healing as much from the quantum charge up top. Yasuo oh, gets pulled in as three bits of damage, transforming just to be able to dash out. He's fine. Yeah. Now looking at the map, TNC looking to invade the top side of this map. And now H2 looking to defend as well on his red buff or orange buff rather. Ten seconds before the second turtle spawns. Yeah. Ryzen is a little bit ahead when it comes to the EXP. I'll try to force H2 to use the Retribution at this point, and he did use it. And, and that's that gonna means be, free turtle. Yeah, it's gonna be worse for uh, Omega, because again, they did not get any uh, of that first turtle at all. But now, they're uh, checking in, four for four. Uh -huh. Yasuo a little far in from the Y bush. I think this is a straight call. The Barangay don't want none of this. Yeah, uh, they're gonna give out this turtle for free, and that's going to be the second turtle going to the hands of TNC Pro Team, still building on that 500 gold lead. This a little is bit very of lead, for characteristic sure. for TNC. Yeah. This is I, just how they play. Yep. At 1.92 turtles per game, Ryzen is already, you know, uh -huh. proving his uh, worth as a jungler. Whoa. Also securing those early objectives. And a push from TNC is definitely beneficial, especially because we're just uh, looking at when the outer turret energy shields will drop. Yeah, and uh, that's an easy 150, 200 gold for the hands of a Roger, but Super Yoshi. Might get a bit of damage here, but no big commit coming in from Omega. Still defending their orange side. Yeah, of the past five minutes, I'd say two or three, H2's been defending his own jungle. And it's yeah. all because of Yoshi, so aggressive, he died once. Yeah. But I'd say, so far, it, it's allowed for Ryzen to be this far ahead. Yes. Uh, uh oh, Ryzen! Detna's welcome. Oh, missed oh, no, him, no one it. home. H2 can, can not be air. Now Ryzen backing off, guiding wins off. And they're fine. TNC holding an 800 gold lead. H2, wow, crossing the river. Now using the retribution as well. They're not yet done. They want Yasuo or the turret. Now they're going to go up here. Going up for Super Yoshi! There we go. Final slash coming in. Claps one. Goyo's out. And they go in straight through tier two. Ryzen very low. Still alive though, pushing them back. They're going to try to collapse. Just one minion left. Turret's going to fall. Super Yoshi comes in. Jumps under two. Backing off, Riona. but now Yoshi's gonna get clapped this time around H2. Getting one more, Ooh. two Ooh. for none. Three kills for the new Barangay, and now we have an even ball game. Yep, and Omega with a very quick five man up top. This is just six minutes in, and they wanna get a push. And even when H2 has been finding a lot of trouble when it comes to his jungle, he's already 3 0 and 1 for the side of Omega. The fact that he's not dying, but he's securing some of those kills means that there is a little bit of catch up for H2 right now. Ryzen is level 10 and H2 is level 9, but that means that Omega has still the, uh, even up the economy. Yeah, now the third turtle being started here by TNC. Super Yoshi goes in. That's one big jump, two knocked up. H2 is still alive. Joe wailing away. Big appraiser's wrath though. TNC scored oh! 33 for 3. Dennis welcome in, already down one. TNC going in for four, trade off for H2. Goyo and heads back and off. Rise is still alive. There's the old Nether Realm Rise from Wook here. Rise is going to get clapped this time around. Riata takes his head. Oh. And that's a lot of kills for the Barangay. Omega looking quite aggressive today. Going in for the heroes instead, yep. giving away the turtle. Was it worth it, Wolf? Definitely worth it because they'll be able to push the mid as well. They're grouping up as five. All they wanted is to really funnel all of their resources onto Jome. They're doing a great job at it. In that past clash, by the way, Ukir was not, um, Goyo wasn't able to find the Netherrealm copy onto Ukir, oh. which is interesting. And that meant that um, TNC's team fight was really, really bad. And, and uh, I think that they're banking on that fact. Yeah, I gotta say, Rebo and uh, Ryota in this game as well, showing up, giving heals, giving in the crowd control, giving Omega the control that they want inside these fights, and now they're going in for another aggressive push. Yep, Jome here, gonna wail away and take down, and now it's on like Pumpkin Perry, forcing an early ult from Goyo! Oh, and see in trouble, the final slash from Ryota, 
Taken down the mid laner from TNC. Oh no, A2, A2! Five! Check it out! Kent is so far away. He split pushing like oh, no. CKTD. And now, wow! Riotta dashing, dashing, Bang. rising goes down. Riotta gets his head. And just like that, another wave crashes on through. Tier 2 say goodbye, but up top, heads looking to trade. The team fighting coming in from Omega. This feels very refreshing to see in the early game, Wolf. Yeah, amazing jungle coming out from Omega as well. Especially with the trader they have in Ryota on this Arla, just very, very confident about his the limitations of his hero. Allowed for Omega to get extra kills. And even when Ryzen already was... Uh, Able to target a Ryota with a Daytona's Welcome under the turret. The fact of the matter is, he's still exposed. And Jome just auto-attacked the Rise that Barrett's to death. Uh -huh. And now the Lord being started by the new Barangay with a 400 gold lead. H2 already tanking a lot of damage here. Goyo is found out by Ukir. Super Yoshi and Ryzen already in the corner. H2 going in for Ukir instead. They're still preparing for the Lord, but who's going to get it? Hez is going to make it. There's a Circle Eagle already. Yoshi looking for Rebo, spotted. They are scrattered. They oh, final slash on the two. Yasuo forced the flicker back. He's very low. The Nether Realm from Ukir, big knockup. Lord's on their side. Lord at the fifth of his health, a tenth of his health. H2. And now heads Bang. looking to get it in. Retribution for the Barangay. Clean take. Ooh. And after giving out three turtles, they take the first Lord for themselves. A super scrappy fight for TNT, but a clean take for Omega. It's looking at opposite ends of the spectrum, Super Yoshi jumped way too early. And Goyok, even when he was just standing in front of Fuker, did not copy the family's ultimate and actually did not use the ultimate the entire clash. While Omega, they're being very much on point. Ryota with his jump, also Uki with the timing of the family's ultimate. Rebo just keeping tabs of Jome all throughout that clash. It's night and day between the team fights of the two teams. Uh, looking good for the new Barangay. Jome's gonna go in for the turret here on top side, and H2 is gonna provide a lot of pressure inside the purple side of TNC. Omega is looking good in the early game, but still, it's just a 2k gold lead. This is the biggest lead we've seen all 10 minutes of game one, and that is speaking just about what we've seen so far. Ukir has already changed Omega's tempo. Oh, Ukir yeah. saw in the mid game where he can make a difference and even force Goyo to act weirdly is what Wolf observed, yeah. right? Yeah. So oh. now they're already knocking down TNC's door. Now H2 gonna get eaten up. Whoa. The is welcome. Go back to the barangay, he says. And now Ryota looking for the final slash. They're wailing away. H2 very deep. There's a lot of damage coming in, but he's still alive. Ooh. He'll stay alive for maybe one second longer as the turret falls. Saved by the Nether wow. Realm. And now Heads catching a lot. The ult from Goya saves him, but Ukir says, nah, -uh, son, you ain't ever gonna leave. And they're gonna move on to mid. And now mid lane is the push, is the call here for the new Barangay. Oh. Goyo trying to defend with that siege minion about to fall down. I feel like this is already a successful defense from TNC Pro Team, but Omega, they got what they wanted down bomb. Oh. I would say not a successful defense for TNC at all because mm. they weren't able to get any kill after that. They lost their turret. It's still very scrappy at their team fights. Oh, they're oh. still going. They're still going underneath tier three in mid. That's a turret down. Yasuo down. Omega just collapsing onto the, the Phoenix. They trade out Ryota for Ryzen. Two for one so far. Omega, they've been so disciplined up until this point. H2 uh -huh. taking too much damage. Head takes him down. And now Head traded out for Ukir. Ukir. They smell blood in the water. They smell blood in the water. Nether Realm coming in. There's a wave Super in Yoshi. The wave is still here. They just need the whaler at the base. Game one goes to the Barangay. And they finally secure their second point in the regular season. Smart Omega takes game one. And I gotta say, big props to Ukir in this game. Specifically that last clash, or it's not actually the last clash, but the bottom lane turret push, the inhibitor, big dog upon, and then entirety of Omega with the way that they're juggling. And like I said, TNC just cannot find a good team fight. For some reason, they're so disoriented. Yeah. And uh, I, I say the mix of veterancy and new blood for Smart Omega is looking great today. They had the Rebo and H2N with Okir straight up from MDL. I'm liking this uh, Smart Omega lineup. Not to mention how patient and how persevering H2 was for the first five or six minutes of that game, right? TNC were living in his orange side mm. jungle. He recovered like Taz, if you know what yeah. I'm saying. 
Taz from MPLID is so yep. good at this uh, all throughout the 2023 season. And now here, we've seen H2, he picked up a few lessons yep. yeah. from across the seas. Like, you know what? I can do that. Ryzen, you can live here. I'm fine. Yeah. And uh, not just that, but Super Yoshi as well was just going in in the jungle again and again. But how did H2 survive that amidst all of those pressure? Oh, well, it was just all about the trades. And they make sure that after the, the objectives were taken by TNC, the fight afterwards, the post-turtle takes or post-turtle fights were actually always in favor of, TNC, of uh, Omega. And I think I will not just credit H2 here, but the fact that Ukir was always there. And they kind of have to hand it to Rebo and Jom. They oh, did yeah. not separate their, separate their ways at all. Yeah. And uh, looking at that entire match, the veterans, the new bloods for Smart Omega, I kind of want to see who the MVP is. It looks like it's going to be Ukir from MDL all the way to MPL with a successful debut game, giving Omega their second win. Yep. First game for Ukir already the MVP of the game. And I think that he really played this Faramis so well. I was thinking, like, there was some part of the game where Goya wasn't able to copy the Faramis ultimate. That was that happened in the early stages, which kind of you have to give it to Uki because he wasn't really seen by this uh, Valentina. But up until the end, the timing of his ultimate to support his teammates was phenomenal. Going in for the Durance allows him to be more aggressive in the early stages. And then Chad Tasma to, to kind of spam the snag from the Shadow Stampede, which he was able to utilized perfectly and I think in this game there were so many good snags even the early in the, the early stages coming out from Ukir and we're gonna see through the highlights how this happened a very important fight as there will be a trade Ryzen already oh uh, did not have to uh, did use the retribution but then tried to fight again and he was exposed and right after his ultimate he was already uh, being taken by the stampede and here's a wonderful team fight coming out from Omega. Watch out for the turret juggling, mm -hmm. as well as Ryota just taking advantage of the healings. And then Ryzen exposed. You can see Ukir and Jom just getting in and out of the aggro of the turret so that they can fight afterwards. The dive eventually coming out from H2, almost being punished by TNC, but Ukir had a good timing of the Nether Realm. That's why they were punished eventually afterwards. At this point, TNC just scrambled. There wasn't any good usage of their ultimates. And even at this point, Goya still has the ultimate, but does not have Ukir. Um, in, not in range of Ukir, so that they cannot find the opening. I mean, there's so many times where the ultimate was up for this Valentina, wasn't able to utilize it. It's mainly because of the positioning that you see from Omega. Yeah, and uh, looking at the stats here, it's a 12-minute game. It honestly felt like it was 20 minutes or so with all the action that we saw. But let's run down the stats here. Yep. Oh, of course, the, uh, the Florida, the first victory of the Florida that we've seen quite a while going for tenacity and just uh, in general going for the support emblem meant that he's able to spam and also the fact that he went for tenacity meant that even when TNT tried to dive him he will be able to pop the ultimate no matter what he did not die in this game actually 0-0 zero, zero and 11 Rebo's phenomenal uh, positioning as well as the support from his teammates allowed TNT to eventually win in this game and interestingly the early pickup on the Thunder Belt for the members of Omega I think that their idea in this particular game is to kind of tank up in the early stages. It was Brute Force best played for H2 and then Jom with the Thunder Belt. So what they're trying to do here is to kind of sustain themselves first and then team fight as five. And that was the main theme of this game for Omega going up against TNC. TNC and wanted to control the early game, but they cannot because of how uh, sustainable and tanky for Omega was and also the fact that they're grouping up as five. Yeah, and uh, looking at that 5v5s, looking at all the team fights, I think uh, Ukir really shined around those areas considering that this Faramis, as far as I know, was picked, I think, in the second phase. They just gave uh, Ukir that confidence. Uh, it was picked in the first phase, actually. Mm. It was the first phase, second side, so red. Exactly. Uh, and because of this performance by Smart Omega, they have single-handedly boosted Florin's win rate to 50%. That's true. <laughs> Season 13, she's one for one now. One loss, That's one true. win. That's and true. who'd have thought that it would come in clutch in this very, very critical place that Smart Omega needed a dub. Yeah, and coming in from Rebo himself, uh, one of the more renowned veterans here in our league. Uh, welcome back, I would say, in, uh, with their second win in the regular season. 
And looking at the format, I just want to revisit that as well. If they're able to secure their second win in yep. either Game 3 or Game 2, they're going to get their first three points exactly. of the season. So this is really big if you're smart Omega. By the way, Infinix GT Series Outplay the Rest, brought to you by Infinix, the official sponsor of MPL Season 13. Be unstoppable and outplay the rest with the Infinix GT Series. And now speaking of outplaying TNC Pro Team, it was obvious that they got outplayed inside team yep. fighting. Do we... Do we have to see big adjustments coming in from TNC Pro Team in Game 2? Here's uh, what happened. Besides uh, how Goyo was spaced out very well by Ukir, seeing how important that Valentina was to their yeah. overall team fighting strategy, the way we set up how the Young Phoenix heads was a key point to yeah, their path towards victory. A majority of Game 1, he was away from TNC. He was away from his teammates. Yeah. Even in that last team fight, he was trying to split push and then exactly. too late. Smart Omega was already knocking down two inhibitors. So yeah. now maybe, I don't know if you would agree with the Wolf, maybe they draft to allow for him to join fights sooner. Yeah, Some, yeah I think uh, CC should be tailored to, towards that uh, kind of uh, play style. But I think that TNC really panicked when everything was going down. When, 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 uh, uh, Omega start, try to group up, the natural response or the, the fight or flight response is flight wherein you try to split the map because you know that you cannot fight 5v5. So it's more like a, um, the way that they're deciding on where to put their pieces yeah. in the map. The and uh, speaking of pieces and team fighting, there's one hero that comes to mind. The Vexana is one of the best team fighting mages out there right now. And his high rarity Zenith skin, Twisted Fairytale, is now available. From March 25 to April 30, participate in the draw event and enjoy 30% off your first 10x draw and 50% off your daily first 1x draw. Here's the thing, you can even stand a chance to win Vixana's battle emote, I'm the Queen, Elimination Effect, Apple of Doom, and other amazing skins. Come on and join the draw now. I personally gotten the emote, but I unfortunately ran out of diamonds to get the actual skin itself. So for the people watching there on YouTube, make sure to join our giveaways. And for TikTok, the Lari Good Bag, you might get a bonus diamonds there of 500 if ever you do join our mechanics and giveaways. That way, you could get extra diamonds for those beautiful skins. And speaking of beautiful skins, I know this isn't part of the spiels here, but that Moscow skin, though. That, that infernal something something with skin. ID, with the ID. With, with the, the ID, ID, it's so good. And uh, I would say that I hope I see the Moskov soon enough here huh. inside. Because the most unique heroes used here is uh, right now 34 at Smart Omega. Who knows? They might bring it out. Yeah, they probably they probably can be the, the team that uh, kind of picks it up. However, that's like a if the carry is left open as well as the Roger, those two heroes, you always kind of want to pick it up. Right? It's, it's yeah. too good. It's like, I think. Uh, the carry in the, the Roger right now might even be at the same level of the Uranus Esmeralda duel that we've had. Uh, don't don't remind me. I hate that. I hate that time. Honestly, season eight Esmeralda Uranus. Yep. Every time that the camera pans through the XP lane, you know nothing's gonna happen, man. It's like you and me fighting in the XP lane. Your Uranus, I'm Esmeralda. I'm just doing this, and you're doing what? See? That. Yeah. That's I'm it. even dressed like Uranus. Look at that. Yeah, the color. I'm yeah. not dressed like Esmeralda, though. That's sad. <laughs> I should be dressed as like Esmeralda. You I wish. How about you? You're the Grok man. Yeah. How do, you, how do you dress like Grok? How do I dress? I, he I already need, is. I need a totem. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> there are a lot of off-stream stuff that we would like to know and would like to know the story of H2O. So H2, it's your time to shine. I said to myself that Hmm. na nagtagumpay po ngayong season pag nakapasok po kami ng playoffs sarili ko po naalay ko po sarili ko um, ngayong season 13 ang masabi ko pag nag masabi kong nagtagumpay na ako siguro pag nag champion ako ngayong season tsaka pag nag champion ako ng international MC or M6 yun ngayon masabi ko tagumpay na ako Talagang pwede na ako mag-retire. Ayun lang gusto ko naman patunayan eh, mag-champion eh. Ayun lang hindi ko nakakamit eh. Man, I love to see H2 still with the burning passion of winning an international title. Even mentioned M6 out there. He's been playing for a long time already in yeah. the league and it's... Uh, 
I feel like one big push is all it takes for someone like H2 to turn from a local hero to an international champion. He's been playing for four years now. Four years, baby. Four years, that's right, because it was season six. That's right, when they qualified under Next Play Solid. Wow. Well, he was joined by his time. brothers, Yaoi, now playing for Aura, and Renegade the Hitman, yes, Pakarse. I, I miss him dearly. Uh, yeah. yeah, everybody misses Renegade, honestly. Not as much as me. Oh, no, yeah. Okay. No, but you are the okay. Renegade super fan. Can, I am can you an, say that? Can I am say an that? advocate of the Hitman. Advocate yeah. of the Hitman. No, say it. I'm a Renegade super fan. I live and breathe Renegade. Damn, that's even more interesting. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. You can't tell me what to do, but I will say it's close to what you're asking me. Yes, thank you, yeah. thank you. Okay. That, that, that just is, That's just it, you know. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what thank it you. is. And uh, continuing this uh, conversation, who, which player do you miss the most, honestly? Cool. Ah. Wow, that's uh, interesting. I, I gotta say Dilar, maybe? Oh, wow. Dilar? Hey, Dilar is LFT right now. Dilar is LFT. Hey, who knows? Yep. Uh, one player that I do like to always when, when he's playing is Rafflesha. Oh, that is very, very, uh, in, especially in interviews, right? Yeah, yep. that guy's uh, Chan is Chan is what we would like to call in the business the complete package. Why? Okay, he's uh, he's got experience. Okay, he's a great talker. Yeah. Two-time champion. Two-time champion. Mm -hmm. Creates content. Yeah. Uh, yeah. solid on the land of dawn. Yeah. Then the complete package, definitely. And uh, speaking of complete package, I, I would say Rebo is also in the line of a complete package. Yeah. No, wait, cross that. Rebo and also H2. H2 yep. does content, uh, but yep. you know, hasn't won championships yet. And he did mention it earlier in his interview. But now let's yep. head on to the draft. Looking at the draft right now, it's Omega in the blue side, red side on a TNC. What can we see and what can we expect? Uh, Xborg perhaps as the ban for TNC. Always on the way. And unsurprisingly, the Faramis being banned out. Uh, Ukir looked to be a beast with that hero. Oh yeah, with that MVP performance in game number one. It's uh, no doubt that he could play that hero, but do you think that it's a very singular type of play style here for Ukir? Or can he play the Gushuns and the... I don't know, what's an exotic mid laner? He had a mid Fovius already. Yep. Oh. So I discount the fact that he only is a one-trick Faramis. Uh, he's yeah. definitely going to be able to pick up Vexana. Definitely no going to be able to pick up a uh, Lilia. So that's out of the question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With the set of bands, I think Omega are eyeing uh, first pick Fredrin, honestly. And for TNC, they should ban X Borg, then take the CC again, make uh, make make another case for that CC play, uh -huh. and then maybe take out the uh, the, the Rebo heroes afterwards. Yeah, how do you even build around the CC? Like, uh, oh, what's yeah. a good idea around that one? Yeah, you want to speed up the CC so that you can enjoy the fights. Um, you want uh, you want a sweeper with the CC because CC uh -huh. deals the damage. And you need someone to kind of finish the kill afterwards. So clean up. Yeah, to clean up. Somewhere in the lines of a Roger, uh, as expected. Oh, okay. So what's left open? Um, the, yeah, the Fredrid should be the first pick here for Omega, right? Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's Minotaur. Wow. They are really just making sure the goat knows knows what it's what's going on. Like, yeah. Rebo, what do you need? All right, cool. We'll do that okay. first. Yeah, and, uh, I would argue that the Minotaur right now is second to the Mathilda in terms of uh, what he could bring to the table. Yep. So, no doubt, this Minotaur first pick on the blue side already calling it worth it. Yep, I, I do like it. Um, it kinda, you're gonna be scratching your head if you're TNC because I you will give that up. my own path. Arlet Fredrin, perhaps for TNC, pick it up immediately. Yeah, big on the combos, Fredrin and <laughs> Arla. Uh, I would say that this is a soft combo where the yeah. amount of crowd control that this Fredrin could give just allows yeah. Arla to dash so much yeah. more. Yeah. Should be uh, Barretts for Omega as their follow-up. Or, uh, yeah, Barretts in combination with the uh, carry, perhaps. Or, I'm thinking, there is a chance for Omega to kind of pick up the Akai, actually. Ooh. Because um, you kind of have your own self-cleanse. As uh, as you would with the uh, Barretts, right? And the fact that there are so many like um, um, CC or not not actually the hero, but crowd, crowd control, control. Yeah. GNC, it kind of merits the Akai or the Barretts. Yeah, the Barretts oh, could be a great pick here, but looks like they're gonna go for the Vixana instead and pair it up with the Roger okay. once again. And most likely, this will be going to the hands of Jome once again. Yeah. So do you pick up the Harith here for TNC? Usually the answer to the Roger. Harith, or do you just pick up the Claude? Harris has a whopping one win in Season 13. Okay. Yo. In the hands of AP I Red. it's whopping. Oh. <laughs> okay. I take that. I take that. I take uh, that one whopping W. Yeah. Then it, thick well, air of, multiple L's. Thick, yeah. thick air of sarcasm. But yeah. 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 
<laughs> but no, it, it, it's very difficult because again, yeah. even if it is like fundamentally a great answer yeah. to yeah. the Roger, you pick it this early, best believe the Barangay is going to clap back with the last two picks like, oh, exactly. you know, he's oh, going to beat up that Harith. So. Everyone has a beast within. Well, it looks like Whoa! they're going to go for the Masha instead. Masha. And then this probably confirms. So I'm not saying surely, but still this is either a big flex between the Rome and XP, yeah, I, between I, the Arlet, you know? I, yeah, I I kind of get what you mean, but I kind of don't want the uh, Masha to be the EXP yeah. Um, yeah. in this particular game, especially because you're facing up against both like uh, Vexana and Minotaur. That's hard to really get into the back lines. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you have Dark Hit from the uh, Rome Masha, right? Yeah. X-Work should be a ban here for TNT. Well, wow. okay. right on the dot there. And now for the stats of Ryota as well, look at that average CC time, just 11.4. That's, that's a lot of is crowd that a, control. Does that mean second light. or? Yes, yeah. that's a second. Okay. Okay. Sure. No, no, just just second. making sure. Just, just making, making sure, you know. <laughs> the Luoyi taken out here for the side of Barangay, yep. uh, the, the new Barangay rather. Yep. And looking at the, uh, the Luoyi, the chip is still open if you, nope. if you want the chip, teleportation. Chip, number chip, one, bro. Bro. chip number one. Chip number oh. That's right. No, no easy access. No VIP pass here, bro. Yep. Oh. You can get the backstage. Yeah, you I go to the bouncer. Him. You go to Rebo. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Did you just give him a new moniker? No, he's a the minotaur. Bouncer? No, he's a minotaur. He's, he's a front door. That's true. Yeah. That's He's the front door. Yeah. He does deserve a new moniker, though. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, the title of GOAT is a highly contested title. Right I now, most right now. especially. Yeah, most and how fun. crazy is that? Four out of the five were all in the M2 lineup of Brady Sports. Right. That was crazy once. That's, that's they put me in a room. A room filled with rubber rats. <laughs> No. Oh, all right, please continue okay. with your idea, Wolf. Uh, everything was thrown out of it. I don't it. know. I just lost it. <laughs> what is this there for Goya? All right, there it is. Um, Angela? Okay, yeah. Oh, obviously, Angela Masha. That's yeah. That's a little bit scary. Yeah. Um, the fact that Novaria is not getting picked up kind of bothers you. Kind of bothers me. Yeah. You know? uh, still, the Nova and the Nana are still out there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Nana definitely Nana's one great. of the more uh, aggressive picks here, I would say. You pair it up with uh, Arla, it's going to be insane, long. but looks like they're going to get for uh, the, the carry, carry instead. You did mention this earlier. Yep. Oh, man. Omega, I really like the Akai now for their for their hero. And then uh, CC is still available, which is super duper good versus the Arla, like, like 1v1 wise. Um, and the benefit that you get out of the Akai is that you. Um, prevent the dives from both the Arlet as well as the Masha. Yeah. And I think TNT are going to regret giving that up. So you either Akai or Barats here for Omega. And then for Ryota, it's either the uh, CC or actually a Terizla. Yeah, I honestly miss Terizla. Yeah. I feel like he hasn't been picked uh, for a lot of times already. It's always been different options out there. But they're going to go for the glue instead Whoa. and the Harith. Jungle Which Harith. means it's going to be either a Jungle Harris oh. or a Jungle oh. Roger. Jungle Roger. Jungle Roger. Jungle Roger. Straight H2. out of the book yeah. of Aether. It's the book of Aether. Hi, Jungle Roger. We're throwing back to okay. 2021 Season 7. We are so back. With no Fire Mist, no AoE. What do you pick up against the glue now? TNC. No Luigi as well. Ryota has a one-track mind. Find, find hmm. Yasuo. That's it. Yeah. Oh man, this is gonna be difficult for TNT. What else do you pick up? Uh, Nana, maybe. Uh, it's it's also dangerous to play the Gord. Yep, Gord. If I was just a tree in the but let's say they're gonna go for the Nana, as you guys said. Uh, there's only like two counter picks to the glue. It's the Vixana and the Faramis. The Vixana is on their side right now, yeah. so the glue makes a lot of sense. So man. good. Okay, Jungle Raj. We're gonna see it. Jungle Roger after a long, long time without Roger it. Roger Toll! Lancelot, okay. Roger wins games. If you don't know that reference, Google it right now. Google this is history. History. This is a legacy of a hero that has been reworked and went through a renaissance and now back in the role it started in. Yep. And you know how historic would it be if Omega g gains their first sweep of uh, the regular season of MPL Philippines Season 13 with a Jungle Roger. Yep. You would, you could hear someone say right now, probably restreaming, probably watching, saying, Roger wins games. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> like Confirm that it is going to be a roaming Masha, though. Yep. That's uh, so a roaming Masha and uh, an XP lane Arlot. 
I'm so excited for, for this game. It's It's been a while, and uh, but I would say that it's still a big risk if you're a smart Omega, considering that the, the safety of having a flicker is now not an option for this yeah. Roger. Yeah. I really like the group pick, though. I think uh, it's a really good find coming out from Mr. Snap, Coach Snap. F looking for that glue. Glue is always a problem for, for, uh, for the carry, so I really like this play coming out uh, from Omega. And it's not like a hero that you can bully out of the lane, right? It's a oh. very good laner. That's true. It bullies you. Exactly. And for the most part, if you touch it uh, and he touches you back, it's it's not the best time. It's a uh, very sticky, very painful. And now Heads looking for some pain. Here we go. First blood might be upon us. And Riota gets squished just like that. Wow. We were just talking about how good the glue is. And TNC's like, nah. -uh. Uh, maybe overestimated his tankiness, especially in the early game. I do believe that it, when you're level 1, level 2, no matter how tanky you are, there will be no strong guy in front of four people. Yep. And he did not burn the flicker, knowing that um, it's already... <laughs> he uh, accepted his fate. Uh, he accepted his fate, generally. This is the benefit, or, or uh, I mean the the disadvantage of going for something, some, something like a marksman jungler. Yeah. In the first two minutes of the game, you don't have the license to team fight. Actually, you're just focused on farming. Yeah. Uh oh, top lane, TNC. And now they're, they're they're gonna bear down on Riota. They're gonna make him pay for that first blood. Yeah, and they're gonna try to get Okir and Riota level four here in the XP lane. But Ryzen is ready to respond just in case. Goyo gonna do the same thing. Gonna clear out the two siege minions before the turtle even starts. But Heads looking for that level four reset doesn't really find it. And they're going to go ahead and clear those XP lane carts. And just like that, we're up. Whoa! Off camera! Just barely to your left, folks. Ukir gets popped there. H2 so is level uh, 5. Another kill for TNC. Uh, but yeah, no, some good news for the Barangay. They are hyper farming now. Okay. Another fight breaks out. Yoshi, Yoshi jumps on H2. H2 transforms. H2 looking for one. Ryzen going to confirm the turtle here. Big knockup coming in from wow. the goat. Heads gets taken out. That's one for one. Turtle Ooh. for a kill. And uh, also gold for H2. Yep. That's going to be, a, that is a very interesting dynamic for TNC. They've already did a great job like zoning out um, H2 and forcing that jump. However, it, uh, Ryzen did not pop the retribution thinking that they want to invade afterwards. But unfortunately, they weren't able to do so because there was one casualty on their side. So... I think that was a miscalculation definitely for TNT. Had it been that they popped the retribution, they would have gotten the shields faster and they could have just run down Omega, but it didn't happen. And then maybe go for the turn. Exactly. Uh, now may H2. Have, may have thought a little too forward. Yeah. Trying to go for the fight there. Still TNC, very even with the gold, just a hundred gold lead for the Phoenix Army. And looking at the early to the mid game portion, do you guys think that the TNC could hold on to this lead? And if yes, what should they do? Something tells me we're going to follow the same beats as game one. Uh, where we're going to have these two teams try to jockey for position. Because it's, it, it's clear. They both know what the other is up to. Yeah. Absolutely. Ryzen is almost level 7 at this point. And uh, it's always the resource battle for the EXP for both the junglers. The fact that, um, that H2 is making a little bit of a distance between him as well as Ryzen means that come the first Lord fight, even when they lose all of the three turtles, oh, they're going to have a oh. great time. Here we go. Ryzen leaning hard, that's it! Can't save Rebo with your old Immortal Guard, Eternal Guard spent by Ukir already. TNC on the uh, offense here. Yeah, the Flicker Burn as well. Big thing for the upcoming Turtle fight. Ukir has to think twice before positioning or even showing himself inside or near that Turtle Pit. 10 seconds until Turtle spawns. H2 still securing his purple. Uh, does this look like they can contest? Yeah, I feel like Omega has to give this out for free. The TNC Pro Team, they're already starting the last or second turtle of the game. And H2, just right in the corner, they're going to contest. Here we go, all five members of the Barangay in the pit. Yoshi coming in from the flank. And there's a big collapse on the Ryzen. Zaman Force spent already. H2 secures a turtle. Ryzen still alive. Gets that grab, grab. And Ukir taken out by Yoshi. 
clawing at him. Her, her, uh -huh. and there you go! Yoshi's gonna get popped as well in the back. H2 gets another one. Wow, that is such a great call coming in from Omega, immediately turning on that Frederick. Yep. Wonderful call, absolutely. And like I said, uh, because of the EXP advantage that H2 is getting in this particular game, kind of like even when TNC starts the neutral objectives, there's always that comeback potential. And at this point, this is the power spike of the Harith. They weren't able to hold down the Harith, and now H2 gets the purple buff, even much bigger of a gap between the Rogers was the Fedrin. Yeah, uses his retribution for it, and no trade coming in from TNC Pro Team. You gotta defend heads here. Ryota zoning him out, and now the tur oh. turret might be free. Wow, look at this Ryota just doing the glue shuffle. Heads can't even think to defend. But Jome drops the Zaman Force too. Yeah, they want to blitz this tier too. Just making sure that they're able to damage this severely. But meanwhile, Yasuo trading the top lane. It looks like he's not going to be able to get that turret as well. Uh oh, H2 might lose his purple here. Catches a face full of ult from Goyo. And is that. Is that. No, he's secured. He's yeah. secured. They're fine. Now they collapse onto the pit. Ryzen in I trouble. Didn't. Got the grab, grab, looking for one. Bang. Big knockup. Ribo secures a kill. Goyo. Goyota. Salmon Force. Ooh. Or Jome. Goyo gonna get his passive popped here. Here comes Heads. Looking to save his mid laner. Oh, H2. And H2 still jumps onto Goyo. Adrenaline in his soul. Oh. Something, something gets two down in mid. Oh. Uh, consider H2 acknowledge. 3 0 and 1 on this roster. <laughs> And uh, TNC tried to go, the idea was there, like uh, evening up the purple buff, they had to use the retribution for that. And now this is turtle number three. Unfortunately, Ryzen is in no position to contest this at all. Omega, yeah. they have a massive power spike and H2 already has the war axe at this point. Yeah, playing to their strengths, playing to their power spikes. Omega is looking like a different beast right now. The same animal, but a different beast for Omega. For the first time, we've uh, actually seen Omega get an early lead like yep. this. I'd say even game one wasn't this quick. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, game one was a 12-minute game. But this time around, seven minutes in, Omega is already building through that 2k gold lead. Rebo with a big item power spike as well, securing that flask. TNC, what should they do around this time? Do they have to slow down this yeah, game? Definitely. They have to look for ways to slow it down. Fortunately, they have the... They have the Nana, so they have wave clear. Um, what they can do now is to just split the map, get as much farm as they can, wait for the late game where Super Yoshi is always a threat mm -hmm. against uh, Jome as well as H2. Yeah. There will come a time where they will have the better power spike in the latter portions of the game, so they really just have to wait for that. Yeah. Waiting for it to happen. Goyo in trouble! And there's the jump. All it took was the desperation stomp. And now Ryzen gonna be up next. Uki okay, traded out though. Yoshi finds him in the back, and now Ryzen's gonna go here. Another kill for H2. And now H2 having fun in this game. 90% kill participation, majority of the gold in his hands. Roger wins games. Oh man, amazing. Amazing plays coming out from Ryota, actually. I gotta say, this glue pick is the problem for TNC. Yeah. Obviously, the Roger is starting to be a problem now, but I think it's Ryota and that glue pick that... Whoa! Final I smash! Jinx. Onto the glue! Takes too much damage from underneath two turrets! Okay. But yeah. still, Omega able to make the best of a bad situation. Yeah, yeah, sure. Another purple buff stolen as well. 3k gold lead here for Omega. TNC looking shell-shocked in this matchup. Cannot find an answer to that glue unless they go for a five-man collapse. Yep. Level and they have two turrets. Yep. Ryzen, level 10. H2 is level 13. First Lord fight. No chance for TNC to fight this. Unless a miracle happens. But uh, not having the flicker on Yoshi means that Ukir, also not having the flicker, might be safe for now. Uh -oh. What? Look at this in mid. What? They find the flank, but they answer back with a Winoan Fury. Super Yoshi down. Jong gets a kill. Zaman Force in mid. Ryzen's oh, gonna fall no. next. H2 gets another one. Two free kills. Two for Omega. Man. Crucial winner's truncheon here. Oh coming in from Okir, growing as a player. Oh man, ill-advised jump coming out from Super Yoshi. Even when that will be a one-for-one trade-off, they know. They, maybe they, he did not look at the 
the items that was available now for Omega. Yeah. Smart Omega made that Masha look like old Masha, yeah. where the life bars going down did not give you uh, an invulnerability frame. Yeah. Exactly. And that is already the first Lord secured here for the side of Omega. They've gotten two turtles and one Lord. Majority of the objectives secured in this game. And now with a 5k gold lead, let's look at the instant replay. Yep. Super Yoshi, yeah. Really ill advice here. And we know that there's all, there always is going to be the sustain of his teammate. And Ryzen is just, uh, at this point, really a non-factor. It's not his fault. It's because of Ryota just really jumping and grabbing that Frederick. And now with the Lord knocking down in the mid lane, can they find a team fight? Big, big final slash set him up. But the answer back, the Minon Fury heads, heads here very low, taking out. Ryota scores another one. The turret, though, still stands in mid. TNC keeps their inhibitor. Two more waves to defend if you're a TNC pro team, but looks like they're going to take away the orange buff. Omega still securing resources where they can find it. How about round two? Here we go. Zaman Force one more time. Super Yoshi finding a target to jump onto. Turret still standing. Ryzen goes down. Goyo barely alive. Now their eyes on a Super Yoshi flickering it out. H2 takes down the Amazon. The Masha falls. Just three defenders left for the Phoenix as Barangay Omega takes down the top lane inhibitor. Now oh. the base, now the base heads going down as well. Yes, Trade well. for Ukir. And now, here we go. Smart Omega looking to take it in. They sweep the Phoenix. Smart Omega wins their first series in season 13. With Ukir going in in MPL. In H2, Rebo clocking in. They finally secure their first three points. On. Unbelievable performance from Ukir in his uh, debut. And I think that at this point, what you will remember and what you will take out is the way that he clutched and outplayed TNC. First game, it was the timing with the Netherrealm. Second game, that winter truncheon that really destroyed everything for the side of TNC. I still have got to commend Snap, though, for drafting that glue. I think that glue was the nail, nail the coffin, I'd yeah. say. That particular game. The yeah. straw that broke the camel's back. Yes. And the whipped cream on top of this whole flambe, that jungle yes. roger. Yeah, and that and that caramelization over that creme brulee or whatever, yeah. man. Just saying that glue pick was beautiful, but still, let's clap our hands for TNC Pro Team, who definitely showed up in this game. They still have matches left in this week to potentially yep. secure some points, but for Smart Omega, how refreshing is it to start week four, the latter half of the regular season, finally yep. with their first win? Well, super duper good because this is like a, like today specifically, is the last game for round one of the round robin. And now we're going to be able to finally talk with Smart Omega with our host, hosts, Marakino and Hans. Congratulations to Smart Omega. Let's give him a round of applause. H2. H2, it's nice. I finally get to interview you. So, you struggle kayo ng three weeks. Ano na contribute sa panalo nyo ngayon? Um, nung ano kasi nung Holy Week, parang ano kami, hindi kami masyado nag day off, hindi kami masyado naggala, ganyan ganyan. Nag ano kami, nag double effort talaga kami nung Holy Week. Kaya ganon, na nakatulong. Bakit sabi niya, we? Ano, what was that? Hindi, siya kasi nag-alay lakad eh. Nag <laughs> So good job, really happy na umaakit kayo ng kahit konti in terms of points. So, hindi lang yun, kasi yun, ito yung unang panalo nila this season. So I'm sure that it means a lot to this team and especially sa kanilang uh, bago, should I say bagong luma. Welcome back to MPL, Ukir. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is Gano so nice to see you. Wala? Di ba nandito ka dati? Gano ka talaga na wala? Um, two seasons din po ata. Two seasons dahil sa TNC, TNC. siya naglaro dati. Huh. So, how does it feel na nandito ka, nakabalik ka, and natalo mo yung team na dati kinabibilangan mo as a player as well? Ano, para sa akin, ano eh, gusto ko lang din manali yung ano, kami. Kasi iniisip ko na lang din wala kami yung point. Tapos masaya, syempre ano, ito yung unang panalan namin. Tapos yung pagbalik ko sa stage, parang gigil, gigil na gigil ako ano eh, pumao eh, kasi yung... Yung sa TNC parang ano eh, wala, hindi ko, parang hindi ko nabigay yung ano, full potential ko. Ganun. 
So, ito na ba yung full potential mo? Kasi ikaw yung naging MVP nung game number one. Ikaw ang nakatulong para sa unang panalo ng Smart Omega. So, yung addition mo dito sa kuponan na to, paano kaya nagbago yung dynamics ng kuponan? Parang ano po, um, siguro yung pagiging, paglilid ko sa game, yun na yung parang kailangan kasi ng direction yung game namin eh. So, parang may kailangan sund sundin. So, yung ako yung parang nire-raise ko yung voice ko para sumunod sila sa akin, gano'n. So, ikaw yung shot caller? Sak sakto lang. Ikaw yung pinaka-vocal? Sak sakto lang. Kamusta siya as, lead as a leader dun sa comms nyo? Um, ano, okay naman. Ma ano, siya, ano siyang player eh, maplan eh. Ayan yung kulang sa amin eh. Parang wala kaming leader sa team. Eh. I think what's missing is a man with a plan. At iyan ang nakikita ni H2 dito kay Oker. But speaking of which, H2 is actually our MVP of game number two. So give him a warm H2. round of applause, man. H2, this is a very good win para sa inyo. Ano bang i-expect namin sa darating na Smart Omega? Because as far as we can remember, right, this is the same glimpse of Omega from the past seasons. Magsisimula ng medyo mabagal and then magiinit pagdating ng dulo. Is this the same for this season or what do you think? Um, siguro ito na yung start ng momentum namin since mag start na yung round two. So, parang may look forward namin na kaya na namin ulit ano, manalo. Kumpiyansa sa sarili. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners for the first series of the day, Smart, Smart Omega. Omega! You may now take your bow and take your walk of victory! The very first time this season na maglalakad sa harap Ang Barangay Smart Omega. You know, they have to feel good about that. Especially, kitang-kita natin yung smiles nila, the way they bring themselves to the stage. It's nice to see them, you know, sharing their stories and getting those interviews. And hopefully, ito na ang simula sa kanilang pagkapanalo. Keeping the momentum. But we're gonna break that down for you. So we're gonna go back to our casters. Paso. Thank you so much, Hans and Mara. And it's just in time for Smart Omega to secure their first three points. They were in desperate need of them. Yep. And now, with securing their three points, they are now four points inside the league. Yep. And that's a significant improvement from having just a singular point. And I think the most important one is the confidence that, that, that goes with it. Like, winning that decisively against TNC allowed for H2 to bring back his confidence as a jungler for Omega. And what better way to win a series and become the MVP but pick a Roger with it. Uh, Roger is not uh, not picked enough in the in the jungle. And if there's anyone that can bring it up and about, it's going to be H2. Going with the War Axe immediately afterwards. And the most important factor here on why Omega was able to snag the victory against TNC was the level gap. And this is one thing that also I wanted to take note about TNC. It's weird that they did not use the Retribution ASAP. And that allowed the H2 to really just improve the gap between him and Ryzen when it comes to the EXP. I gotta have to hand it to H2. Look at this jump. Look at this mechanical play coming up from H2. And then going to the right side. So far, Omega, what, what I noticed in the past two games is they're really good at juggling the third aggro and really good at punishing TNC for that one. The confidence of Omega is through the roof just because of this fact. And dare I say, the real winner for Omega, like I said, the icing on top of whatever cake that is, a uh, flambe, I don't, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> is the glue. And it has been a problem for the entire team again. And I think that if you talk to the members of TNC, surely they will say that, yeah, H2 played well. But I think that everybody from TNC will agree and say, yeah, the glue was the problem. Yeah. You know, looking at the stats over here, an even quicker game compared to game number one. It's 11 minutes, 33 seconds. Yep. No Luminous Lord in this game. They just went at it inside yep. the base of TNC Pro Team. Uh, straight up just ended for Omega. Um, specifically because of Jome and how he played this, like he knew that the second turtle will spawn in his lane, so he made sure that he is uh, in great shape to actually team fight against TNC. Immediately zoning out the members of TNC at the start, Big J Big taking J. advantage J. of this Harith pickup. We know for sure that it has a great power spike in the second turtle, and the fact that the turtle transfers to that side 
you just have to make sure that you have enough levels. You have the Thunder Belt, uh, making sure that you are tanky enough and also um, impactful enough in a team fight. There's so many good things that Omega did in this game that TNC was just... And I would use what Womi have used in that game. They were shell-shocked. I wonder what that means. Uh, it just means that they weren't prepared for it. They were shocked. They didn't know how to handle that glue pick. <laughs> and uh, it was quite obvious as well. And I honestly think the Faramis ban and the Vexana pick as well made it even more beautiful. Because there's no other major, no other hero yep. that could have countered that glue. Well, it's, it's a wonderful pickup because it makes a lot of sense against the front-to-back composition. One thing that maybe we can talk about now is the fact that uh, Glue counters the carry and oh, Glue yes. also counters the front-to-back composition, which is perfect. Like, every time that there's a friend ring, uh, uh, that, that relies to be in the front lines, you're facing up against a Minotaur and a Glue, very difficult to play in that yeah. game. And uh, it's very difficult to see another uh, glue pick, especially without that setup. So hopefully we get to see more games with him. MPLPH live stream viewer rewards are now available. Come and watch the MPL matches in TikTok to join the Good Bag Lottery and be one of the lucky winners. Go to TikTok, go to the MPL Philippines TikTok channel at MPLPH underscore official and click the official live stream over the upper left corner of the Goodie Bag Lottery to join in. And it's such a good time to watch MPL and win prizes. And uh, speaking of wins, it's already Smart Omega securing three points, but our next match will be Blacklist versus RSG. Two teams that had very different stories in week number three. One had a lot of points, and meanwhile the other scored none. And now their story starts in week four. It would seem like they're both going in different directions going into the second half of yeah. season 13. But we wish them all the best, and as the players would say, we wish them to show us a good time. Oh man, a classic, a classic at this point. But I do think that RSG will give us a good time in that particular game. And now, so what's the, what is Blacklist? I don't know who will, they will be picking up. They have Kimpo as well as Haji on the rotation. And that's very true for RSG. Will this be the time where Nibor is going to be get Ooh. back, right? And maybe there's a, a little bit of change there for RSG. We don't know. Who knows? At this point, RSG Blacklist looking good for our next match. Name is Umi. With me here is Leo and Wolf. This has been MPL Philippines Season 13. And we will be waiting for our next series after this short break. The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Guys, next weekly tournament. Game tayo, ah. Sige, basta ako ang tank, ah. Gold day na MM ako, ah. Expelli na ako. Kaso, nag-last day na nga pala si Kyle. Okay guys, please welcome Mimi, our new teammate. Hi Mimi. Good to have you Mimi. Hello. Please take the empty desk. Thank you. Hi, welcome sa department. Ah, oh, thank you. Baka gusto mo sumali sa team namin. Meron kaming ML tournament. Ah, uh, hindi ako nagigame sa sorry. <laughs> Um, turuan kita. Gusto mo? Dali lang naman. Tsaka parang team bonding na rin tayo. Uh, pwede naman, pero hindi ako nagigame sa as in zero knowledge talaga. G lang. Magkukura ako, bubuhatin kita. What? Five seconds till the enemy reaches the battlefield. Smash them! Oh, Mimi, dito ko lang sa tabi ko, ha? Mimi, Oh, boss, tayo tayo, ha? Deflang, deflang. 
GG. Bawi na lang Sayang. next time. Nice game, guys. Later na ako. Focus lang yan, Mimi. You're making progress naman eh. Basta focus ka lang sa atin. See ya. Sa atin? May kami na ba? Mimi, sa tournament, dapat masanay tayo gamitin yung in-game chat. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Hoy, Mimi, yung turtle! Oh, sorry, 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 sorry! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Uy, nice presentation kanina. Oo oh, nga, nice one. Siyempre, para Sabi. tapos agad. Hello. Uy, Mimi, may new skin yung Esme. Kit ng fit niya. Try mo kaya. Pwede naman. Sinong cute? Uy, sinong cute? Yung skin, yung skin. Ay, yung skin. Oh, no. Pero cute nga. Alright, do you think we'll do this friends ng Team Finance at Pedro nila this year? Gigi kanina. Thanks sa uh, pag-join sa squad namin. Anytime. <laughs> so, sa ka na niya? Sa bahay. Magdadalulo sa King Pro Max. Huh? Ah, hindi ko pa alam eh. <laughs> <laughs> Gusto mo mag-coffee sa tupad? Saka, game na rin. Looking for a
<laughs> Impossible. Get him out of here. He's coming. He's coming for us. <laughs> Generation Z, authentic, real. They thrive in the mundane. But let's be real, nobody knows what they want. Only they truly understand. For real? Yeah, but that's okay. We get what you need. Uh, guys, where are we going now? Anywhere! Mountain, beach, middle of nowhere! Why? Because we can! <laughs> well, let me help out. Smart 5G best in 5G coverage experience and best in 5G availability. Oh, wow, those are a lot of apps. That's fine. When you got power off, you could do it all. Multiple apps? <laughs> no problem. From Wi-Fi to data in an instant. Yes, sir. Magic Data saves you any time you need it. And it doesn't expire? That's right. Cool. Oh, dead spot. <sighs> if only you could switch in an instant. Oh, wait. What? what? ESIM is, is that, that easy? Fur fur. For real to say. Backed up by nationwide coverage. So, yeah. Nobody knows what Gen Z's want, but we can keep up with real connection and real fast data. Live for real with Smart 5G plus nationwide LTE, Power All, Magic Data, and eSIM. You guys pretty much know what we need. Live more today.
fairy tale ended with the poisoned apple, and my tale began. A princess in a tower is just a bird in a cage. before your queen. It won't take long, I promise. transferin natin. Class, meet your new classmate. Felicissimo. Moy na lang po. Lisa, kay mo muna si Moy ha as you adjust to our school. Thank you, Iha. Okay, everyone, bring out your social studies textbooks. Thank you, Melka. Pero kaka-start ko pa lang eh. Noob pa ako, tsaka newbie rin dito. Sus, school um, and ako bahala sa iyo. Dali lang to. Road to meeting agad tayo. Pakinggan mo lang ako. Rule number one, let your personality show. Pakita mo kung sino ka, be. Perfect na perfect. Rule number two, find a good school life balance. Study hard, play hard. Yes! Ang galing na! One. <laughs> Rule number three, basic lang galawan dito. Basta alam mo, Pryo, magpataba para lumakas. More kain, more energy. Top no whips, no butts, winning in game. Bada to Sophia, yeah, yes. 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 Yes.
mo matikin ang aming boses sa new level Nasa kalye man o mobile window I become a legend Open fire, we unite new winners Built with pressure, the diamonds are made of Switching a lane na parang gera HP racing may reset up Built like a tank buhat ni Hilda Full load SS parang lighter Susundan ko ang iyong bakas Kasama pa Lacking MVP, just surrender no defeat. But next time, time, I just imagine what we can achieve. Lacking MVP, just surrender no defeat. Giving hundred all my locals, we just cannot be defeated. We are unstoppable, we are invulnerable. Ready, young, equipped, and I have frozen my lack of control. Pack it on the jab like wow. beast of the southeast. Oh. So what I would proud and loud is every enemy we devour. Susundan ko ang iyong bakas Kasama pa taas na bumpay na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Mr. Abby na nalas Hindi hindi ko waatas Kinikilala sa taas Kasi kami ang malakas The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at slashevent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Bago sumabak ang Blacklist International sa laban, kausapan muna natin si Ohev and Sensui. Kamusta na kayo? Okay lang po. Doing well? Okay, meron tayong question of the day. Ito ang question of the day. Sinong heroes ang gusto mong ma-nerf at ma-buff? Simulan natin kay Ohev. Um, ano, gusto kong ma-nerf si, ano, si Freya. Lahat kasi ng tao sa RG na go-one-trick Freya ngayon eh. Sa, ano. Kaya, Kaya, si Freya, ang gusto mong ma-nerf. Sino ang gusto mong ma-buff? Ang gusto kong ma-buff si, ano, 
Si Laila. Gusto ko ano, lagyan nila ng dash si Laila para maging meta siya sa MPL thing. Para maging meta? So gusto mo siyang makita mm. sa MPL Siguro, ngayon? Siguro ano, pag nilagyan nila ng dash si Freya, ano, uh, maging si, meta. Si Laila? Ay, si Freya, si Laila pala. Uh -huh. Lagyan nila ng dash. Magiging very challenging. Gawin nila lang apat skill. Gagamitin mo? Oo. Oh. <laughs> Gagamitin ko agad yun dito. Okay, well, pag nakinig sila, ha, hihintayin namin yan. Ikaw naman, Sensui. Una, nerf. Sinong gusto mong hero man-nerf? Yeah, si, gusto mong man-nerf si Roger. Si Roger. Bakit? So, level 1 pa lang kasi may ultimate na eh. Oh, okay. Walo agad yung skill niya, level 1 pa lang. Okay, sino gusto mong mabuff? Si, ano, si Florin po. Kasi ano, favorite po siya ni, ano, ni Coach MTV. Ah, so para sa kanya, mm. i-buff natin yun. Si Florin po, opo. Oh, okay. So ayan, sa mga manonood, ano nga ba ang gusto niyong ma-nerf? Ano nga ba ang gusto niyong mabuff? At we're gonna go to your opponent at titignan natin kung sino nga ba ang gusto nilang ma-nerf and buff. Hans, ikaw naman. This time, andito naman tayo sa side ng RSG Philippines kung saan kita niyo naman. Si Damon Kai, tsaka si Kose. Parang hindi po inesto ng uh, si Kose. Sige, ay, sino mo mauna? Sino gusto mo mauna? O sige, kahit... Kung ikaw ang tatanungin, sinong hero ba ang gusto mong ma-buff at sino ang gusto mong ma-nerf? Yung ma-buff na lang muna. Gusto kong ma-buff si, ano, si Hayabusa. Hayabusa. Oo nga naman. Hayabusa. Can, can you explain why? Ano kasi, uh, gusto kong magamit ulit si Hayabusa kasi sa buong career ko sa MPL, naka five times ata ang Hayabusa, wala pang panalo. <laughs> ah, okay. So, looking forward to it si Demon Kite. Yung nerf naman, kung sa ali. Uh, siguro si Barats. Si Barats. Okay, bakit si Barats? Uh, masyadong madaya kasi sobrang lakas niya sa early. Okay, sobrang lakas sa early. Makes sense. Thank you, Demon Guy. Di pa natin kay Kusay. Kusay, speak, speaking words of a gold laner, anong mga heroes ang gusto mong ma-buff tsaka ma-nerf? Uh, yung gusto kong ma-buff si Franco. Nahimiss ko na siya sa meta. Sa okay. yung isang speciality ng okay. ano namin. Ay, si Light. Si Light, proud na proud dun sa sagot mo. Okay, pero yung nerf naman, yung nerf, isang mabilisan Ay, lang. Gusto ko ma-nerf Roger, masyadong malakas eh. Masyadong OP sa laning. O yan, Roger, galit na galit sa'yo si Kose. Okay, simulan na natin to. It's RSG Philippines contra sa Blacklist International. Casters, pasok. Welcome back everyone, Umi here, still joined by Leo and Wolf to bring the star match of the day featuring Blacklist International and RSG Philippines. What are those poses, my guys? Esports poses. I'm the default skin. I am the flap teasy. This, this is, is this is Rena J season twelve. Was <laughs> it Rena J season twelve? Yeah, look it up. W which one what is your favorite esports pose of all time? That one. That one. Rena Rena J. J. How about you? Oh, uh, the crowd teasy. Oh wow, that's hard to do. Solid second. Solid second. I, I can't solid do second. that. Mine would be the cobra pose by you. I can't oh. do it myself though. How do you yeah. do it? Maybe I'll make a TikTok video. There's a wind-up. Yeah. There's, There's a wind-up wind up to it. Look, it takes like five seconds, give or take. See? Yeah. There you the go. Venom, the Viper, strikes once again. But this time around, we're going to have to ask what's happening with Blacklist International. Because last week wasn't a good week for them. And they have to put in big adjustments as they go up against RSG Philippines, who took two sweeps last week. RSG is on an upward trend right now. They found their foundation and they are leaning hard on this lineup that is as close to RSG Prime as it gets, man. Like yeah. this is this is all reliable for RSG. Yeah, and uh, so far, of course, uh, we would want to congratulate the uh, Moonton as well for their wins in the Philippine Esports Awards. Congratulations. Hey. I think they've won four awards and uh, that is shared between all of us here in thank our you. community. So thank you viewers at home and thank you for viewers up here. Yeah. You now it's still fun, a big party over here every weekend. But going back in this match, it's Blacklist versus RSG. In terms of Blacklist International, what can we expect? What kind of changes are supposed to happen after that grueling week three? I think it's out of it's not out of the question that they might actually shuffle up their lineup, which uh -huh. is which is weird to say because yeah. you wanna if you want to have Haji get used to shot calling, you want to have Haji get used to fill in the shoes that yep. was once uh, worn by the Hitman. But yep. I, I think knowing Bonchan, they might have this week and maybe a couple more, maybe yeah. max week four, week five to switch it up. Can I just say that this is like a, one of the weird uh, and also this is what I dislike about esports sometimes, you know, when when there's a constant like loss for a team, they always blame someone and now it's Haji like. Come on, man. And now we're going to talk to it, Coach Bonchan. Let's watch this video featuring the coach himself.
nung playoffs last season, dalawang beses yung tinaling Echo. Tama, Coach. So, parang ano, uh, almost same Echo roster. May dalawang bago. And then si Blacklist may isang bago, uh, not really bago, but may difference sa lineup. Do you think, Coach, na sobrang laking factor nung pagkawala ni Rene J sa team? Kaya medyo nagsastruggle yung Blacklist currently. Oh, magaka din talaga ng ano. Magaka yung factor din talaga kasi na build up din namin siya as a natural shot caller namin nung previous season. Eh ngayon nasa process pa din kami na binibuild up si Haji. Eh before kasi, uh, before mag-start yung season dati, talagang uh, nag-spam na si Rene J ng mga uh, position 5 na heroes kaya mas na-improve niya yung pagiging shot caller niya. You always love a coach that values values players not with what they're doing right yeah. now, but what they're about to do in the future. Haji still being yep. built up built up here by Blacklist International. Let's talk about that, but uh, we can save that for later because right now we're talking about RSG's power spike, Absolutely. which means uh, right now they're at their best. Yep. I had a chance to talk to one of their players. His name is Nats. And I asked him what changed in week three and what gave that kind of uh, spike when it comes to their power level. And he simply said it's the confidence between them as a team. Like, it's not about the confidence individually as a player. It's like confidence to, uh, to confidence within each other. For example, the way that he utilized the Arlet in one specific game, the way that he was able to flag and then uh, get a wonderful f a final sweep, uh, fire slash, because he knew that there will be always someone to go with him. And that's very true for all of the clashes that happened for RSG in week number three. And uh, moving forward with this match as well, it's not just uh, RSG and Blacklist who could win this match, the viewers as well. That's right. Who do you think will win this star match? Because there's diamonds on the line. Tune in via our official YouTube stream and comment hashtag Black or hashtag RSG with your game and server ID for a chance to be one of the four winners of 1,000 Diamonds. And 1,000 Diamonds is a lot. Now let's welcome our marshals who will officiate the match. They ensure the fairness and integrity of our games. Let's all welcome Kuya Chico, Jeff, and Patrick, and the last one there as well. And now let's beat the players for the match of Blacklist International and RSG Philippines. Code and the agents have stuck with them through thick and thin. They remain unshaken and unbowed. Truly top tier. This is Blacklist International. The Kingslayers are on an upward trajectory. They have built their foundations, set a course for success, and have come to play. Rise and slay for RSG And their coaches, Coach Bonchan and Coach Panda. MPL Universe, it's FNM Friday Night MLBB. Let's get it! The star match of the day is well on its way. Let's welcome Blacklist International with Ohebs and Sui, Yue, 
Edward and Haji. Wait, yep. wait a minute, that's Kim Poi that we saw earlier. Huh. Oh, that was uh, actually Kimpoi that we saw earlier. As much as we want to hype Haji, and we, I did talk about like the fact that people are overly reacting to Haji's, uh, you know, bad performance, quote unquote. I'm not saying that. But now they will have to settle with Kim Poi. Yeah, and now they're going to fight up against RSG Philippines with an upward trend. Kusei, Demon Kite, Aqua, Knots, and Light. It's a shakeup versus stability. Uh, they're going to be riding that power spike, and they're going to be maybe trying out new things with this new found mm -hmm. momentum, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I'm looking forward for this match as well, mainly with RSG. How do they build off that amazing week? How do they make sure that they continue that upward trend? And for Oheb and Blacklist International, how do they recover from that week three? Let's look at the team head-to-head. -head. Well, it's going to be a difficult situation scenario, especially because this is RSG. We know that Blacklist International plays a little bit slow, and they kind of ramp up in the mid-game for the first Lord fight. For RSG, the way that I saw they, they, the way that they played in the past week was way faster than the tempo that they have been playing in the first two weeks. So that might be a concern here for Blacklist International. Then again, we know for sure that Blacklist is a team that knows how to punish. And that's something that maybe they can do against RSG. Yep. And now, looking at the graph here as well, we could see that in terms of kill participation, it's kind of near for both teams here, as well as the first blood ratio. But in terms of Lord control ratio, that's where the big gap could be seen here between RSG and Blacklist International. You think this would play a big role in this game? Oh, I think absolutely. Because, and I'm only saying this because we know that Blacklist International as a franchise has always been good with neutral objectives. But the fact of the matter remains, they have not been securing those neutral objectives as of late. Mm -hmm. And RC, on the other hand, very good at team fighting, very good at their synergy as a team when it comes to like initiating, especially with Nats at the helm. Yeah, and now speaking of Nats, he's going to go up against Edward. Two star XP laters going up against each other. Uh, who do you think would come out on top? Again, the stats will tell you that Nats is currently on better footing. But look at their careers the past three, four years. Edward, you cannot yep. doubt Agent Zero. Oh no. yes, definitely one of the most capable XP laners out there. Both already has won international championships for the both of them. But looking at the Infinix keys to victory, what can we expect this game? You gotta have to rebuild the code. If you're Blacklist International, show us something. Show us something beyond just waiting for your opponents to make a mistake and punish them. Just look for an opening, take charge. Now, for the side of RSG, maintain the power spike. They are the team that takes charge, and what they need to do is just to make sure that they uh, maintain this momentum that they're living in, and that's where Coach Panda comes in. And we know that we have to watch out for the opposing team's roamers. In this case, it's gonna be the explosive light going up against Kim Poi, the stable support for the team. Yeah, and you, you talked about uh, Kim Poi being a stable roamer. He does share a lot of heroes with uh, former roamers of Blacklist International as well, with a lot of heroes. So this is a very familiar territory for the side of the agents, but for the side of RSG, I think Light has specifically performed really well against Blacklist Absolutely. International in their games. Light is uh, the kind of roamer that literally you have to look out for. He's known to just flank from out of nowhere, take bushes that he will eventually just hold on to for minutes at a time. So I think this is more for Blacklist to look out for, yeah. a warning yeah. for the agent. And now if you're looking out for uh, Light and the other roamers as well, you could look out as well for the goodie bag lottery that we have on TikTok and be one of the lucky winners. All right, listen up. You got to go to TikTok, go to the MPL Philippines TikTok channel. It's at MPLPH underscore official. Click the official live stream and then click to the top left corner to join the goodie bag lottery. If it's not here, then it's over here because it's not your left, it's mine. Oh, wow, that's actually oh, true. Yeah. I just, uh, that's absolute genius out there, Leo. And um, uh, look. You're welcome, brother. Can you <laughs> tap me up, up up there? Thank you so much. Uh, Wolf, we talked about genius, and then uh, usually that's you. Looking uh -huh. at the draft right now, what kind of bands are we expecting? Uh, will we see another YouTube video entitled 100% yeah. prediction rate, Wolf Casts? Minotaur Matilda. That's mm. what I'm looking at. Um, it might not be the first band, but uh, obviously eventually it will be there. Uh, well, it was the first band. Um, yeah. Eventually, the Matilda for RC, unless they want to take that for themselves. Oh, you can't wow. leave it open. You just shouldn't. 
He just shouldn't. It's, it's a no. mistake that only a few survive. Well, it looks like they're going to take away the chip. Okay. No teleportation once again in this series. I am disappointed. Not yet. Not yeah. yet. There's a chance for the Lo Yi to oh, yeah. rear its beautiful head. That's true. L-Y. Yep. Lo Yi, definitely one of the hottest heroes out there, not going to lie. Well, hottest time. picks. You mean hottest picks, yeah. yeah the yeah. hottest picks. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. Just sure. I just have to clarify. I just have to clarify. Yeah. Okay, Th Matilda. Matilda. Oh. <laughs> Matilda is open. So Matthew Hilda's coming out. He's to trick the No, I was speaking of the Matilda. It might just get picked here. The Barretts yeah. is still open as well. Yeah, I think of Matilda, it's just a it's an unravel hero. For sure. Oh yeah. wow. Go deep. Throwing it back. <laughs> Throwing it back. All, All the, the way, way to season seven. That's right. <laughs> All <laughs> the way. Yep. Uh, for context out there, Unravel was the first IGN here for Light uh, back yep. when he was still in, correct me if I'm wrong, Work right. Oster Force That's in right. season seven. That's right. With Kusei, in fact. Uh, they um, go way back. They go, uh, and, yeah. and they've experienced so much already. Kusei had literally played in another region for yep. the most recent years. Yep. He's a Kamai champion. Easy. Yes. Oh MPL. wow. That's Mitch. right. Always on yeah. the way. There it is. I told y'all. Yeah. Unravel the Matilda. Matthew Hilda. <laughs> Matthew Hilda. And now with the Matilda in the okay. hands of RSG Philippines, how can Blacklist International respond? Yeah. What's the smart choice me? here? Frederick <laughs> Arlet, perhaps. Frederick Valentina. They want the circling eagle too. Ooh. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, if you're RSG, now there's a lot of benefit of getting the. The bats immediately for this one, right? They for can, um, and then back it up with a carry, carry, uh, carry, and Barrett's just makes a lot of sense. So like, good, and unless they want to go Roger, uh, Roger, Roger Barrett's instead. Yeah, Roger Barrett's might just be the choice here for RSG Philippines. I mm -hmm. think Kusei has played his fair share of Roger Gold as well, so it wouldn't be a big surprise if we did see that Roger. What would be a big surprise if he suddenly goes to jungle once again, just like H2 uh, in our first series of the day. I Knowing guess, Coach Panda, it might not be. Yeah, uh, might not be. Yeah, in the short list of things. Might not be a lighted okay. man, but I, I do know my, my trait. They take the Arlet immediately, but this is a very honest, I guess, opening for RSG. Yep, you know In, exactly where they're going. Exactly. That's true. So, Blacklist, all the it make the Barrett's make the Barrett's makes a lot of sense with the combination with the Matilda. Arlet also, because you don't want to give that to Blacklist International. But then I'm kinda thinking like Blacklist can just pick up the X Borg later on. Oh it's yeah. Such a good pickup. Yeah, the, the X Borg makes a lot of sense here, yeah. considering that you're going up against the Barretts. And traditionally speaking, the X Borg has Wherever been a great pick against oh, utility okay. junglers. But looks like they're going to go for a Kim Poi hero by securing that Rafaela. Yep. Rafaela, there's a lot of combo that can be done later on. And you can only ban two marksmen for RSG. So I'm thinking, like, uh, eventually along the way, the Bruno going to be banned out by RSG. Yeah, both nope. of them need the marksmen. Yeah. Uh, that is actually true. Like, Roger, yeah. I don't know who will take the Roger. Obviously, RSG will benefit from that hero so much. Yeah. Um, but then, with the presence of the Rafaela, the sustain now for Blacklist International is quite concerning if you are RSG. So maybe you're going to, instead of going for the Roger, you're going to be looking at some somewhere along the lines of a Claude. Magic is uh, well, it looks life. like they're going to take away the Harith first. Looking at the all-time uh, MPLPH hero leader here, Arlot has been played by Nats Whoa. 22 times no and has not lost no ever since. Way. That's a multi-time Grand Finals MVP. Oh. Oh. Laner. From the wow. Oh, yeah. The streak. Mr. Astrologo is in the building. 12 and oh. Oh, man. Insane Arlot player. That spear is like his high kick. Yeah. Well, I, what, from what movie is that? No, no, no. You do not know the Nats high kick? Oh, the yeah. Nats high kick! Yeah. I remember now. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like that happened way back in Season 10. If I, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure he still does that every now and then. Yeah. Like, I've seen him in the back. Yeah. You know, um, uh, just for reference out there in the viewers, uh, Nats, I do think he practices martial arts that's outside right. of MPL Philippines. That's right. and, uh, specifically Taekwondo. Uh, that's why we have high kick the Nats. Yep. Savior will be banned out here for the side of Blacklist International. Wow. Yeah, wow. Thinking that... Aqua might pick it up. They they're really overthinking this. I mean, like, um, if there there if there's a team that picks up that savior, that's RSG. They picked it up in week number one. Oh, Aqua's played it. Exactly. RSG with the ban in the CC, X Borg might be next. But Gord's still open. Oh yep. yeah. 
So the it's just a matter of picking your poison. They would rather deal with the gourd. And uh, quite uh, the peculiar ban here. Yep. Taking away the Nathan from the hands of Oheb. Yep. I think you want to go Roger now for Blacklist. Roger, Rafaela, super so duper good. good. So, so good. much reach for that team because you can just uh, speed up everything. Yeah. And you, you're not that afraid because you can be healed up anyways. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the, the vision as well coming in from Rafaela. Uh, yeah. Definitely underrated, I would say. In terms of utility supports, Rafaela is starting to build up steam compared to his uh, peers. Yep. And uh, frankly speaking, Rafaela has been played more than Estes. As oh, a Estes has a 0% win rate. Pick once. That's true. How about the Nova tricks for RSG? Oh, we yeah, haven't seen that for a long, a long time, long man. Time, right? That would be very interesting if ever we do uh, see the Nova yeah. tricks, but. Only done once in season 13 so far. Yep. Yeah. Nova tricks or. Uh, the Varya and Ixia. Ixia with the uh, Matilda. Uh, oh yeah, we, we rarely see that anymore because yeah. of the content high contention rate of, yeah. of the Matilda. That and just the overall range yes. of uh, engagement in the current meta game yeah. is short to mid. Exactly. So by picking a hero comp like that, you, you're yeah. kind of putting yourself in danger. But if you have a Matilda, yeah, if have, yeah the Matilda just fixes everything. Yeah. Right? Shines the oh! Oh! Okay. A dead patient is a good okay. All right, all right. Okay. With a swerve and a something that we've expected already. Wait, first? This is the first Odette in all of Season 13? I don't think yeah. so. I, I swear I, I remember I I one saw. game. I, I think I saw. I, I think I remember the Odette. But then again, for Blacklist, now, um, now that you need a lot more rage. Like Clint, for example, could be good. Bruno might be the, I would say, the most stable pick here for Blacklist Bruno, International. Bruno Rafa's good because... Carry yeah. Rafa is gonna suffer under the Odette. Exactly. Oh. Carry is just too short range for that. And like I said, the Ixia, it's still there. Rafa Ixia, not so bad. Um, and the, 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 the thing is, you cannot go, you can go carry, obviously. That's a great pickup. But like you said, the Odette is gonna be bad. We know that Roger wins over the carry. So if you wanna win, you need range here for Blacklist. And as Let's you said, I the clan locked in for the side of Blacklist International, and that completes their lineup. Clint, Rafaela, do, do, is this something that uh, would um, mold up well together? Yep, um, Rafaela plus a ranged, uh, range enough uh -huh. kind of uh, marksman is good enough. Like the Bruno, for example, but we know the Bruno is not going to be enough versus the Bats. Clint, at le least, is uh, crit-based, so you can uh, immediately like take out a Bats. But also because the range is going to be enough to kind of make it so that the Odette will not have a great time. I like it because... Blacklist can actually weave in and out. They have the re-engage. Yeah. Uh, for I get that. For yeah. RSG, it's very all in. Like, all right, we're out of circling eagles. We're out of uh, guiding winds. I already popped the final slash. We have to wait. Blacklist can 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 force that out. Yeah, and uh, the constant damage coming in from the side of Blacklist International is very respectable. Not just damage, but sustain as well. They have the Rafaela, they have the Thamas, and these people, they don't give out burst damage, but they do deal continuous damage. So let's talk about the early game here, Wolf. Yeah. Do you think that uh, the Rafaela team, Blacklist International, should push for tempo? Yep, absolutely. This is how you pick, this is always the case when you pick up the Rafaela. You cannot wait for the late game. You cannot wait for the fight to happen to you. You have to speed up your teammates. That's the threat then you want to take charge in this no. game. And going up against the Mathilda, Light already suffering a lot of damage coming in from Kimboy. And this is one of those rare instances where we actually see both healers up against each other. Yeah, but it was zero consequence for Light. Uh, he literally just checked in, gave the information over to his team, and then made Kimboy do exactly what Kimboy is doing right now. He's forced to play babysit, all the while Light is still checking in on Sensui. Yeah. And any, uh, any second that you delay the Frederick is good, like... Whatever it, Light is doing, this is resetting the minions or the creeps, I mean, jungle creeps. Uh, that, that adds up, you know, the time that you spend on the jungle is always compounding when it comes to the early stages of the game. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Rafaela had made the decision to just uh, heal up the Clint for a bit and stay there in lane. But now rotating towards the mid lane, mirroring what Light is doing. This might just be a fight here if Demon Kite is able to find a target, but looks like he wouldn't be able to do so. 20 seconds before the first turtle spawns. A byproduct of uh, the early aggression by Light is the fact that RSG actually have a lot of time to now make calls. They have freer reign across the board for decision making. Because look, Demon Kite can actually say, all right, I'm gonna go here top, 
trying to position for the turtle. And bottom lane, I think the Roger's just so good in the metagame. That, yeah. that's, a, that's a winning lane regardless. Knots in Aqua trying to look for their level 4 power spike here, but can they? Oh. The, uh, in a, a really good a legendary bout up top, Nats versus Edward, but interestingly, Nats is still level 3. Yeah, level 3 Nats might just be trouble here for RSG Philippines. Blackness International starting that uh, turtle, and Light already half HP. Oh, you a great pickup. Now the collapse. Then as well, come throwing into a wall. Abun Jinjin takes a lot of damage, and here's Aqua with a song oh, and no. dance. Another final slash coming in. Aqua draws first blood. Down goes Agent Zero. Double kill oh! and make that a triple for all of RSG. Barreling on forward, a thousand gold. Tensui catches the face full of Circling Eagle. Light weaving in and wow. out. Tensui's oh in trouble. That's four for none. Thank you very much. Woo. The Raiders secure Eternal. That's wonderful recovery coming out from this guy. But then again, Demon Guy deciding to go on Edward. That's actually very peculiar, but they know that they have the damage. They have controlled Edward long enough that they that the Vengeance wasn't that impactful. They took him out, and then that's with a follow-up. He knew that Light had level 4 in after the fight, after the turtle fight. And that Circling Eagle spelled the doom for Sensui. Yeah, and Nats in that fight just gave out so much with the final slash hitting onto those, uh, those stunts just landing right on point. 103 in this game, 100% kill participation for this undefeated Arlut now against Blacklist International. Oh, wow. Did he? Did he? Oh, he did! He did. Successfully committed Grand Theft Purple. Sensui, man, he's going to go into, as Wolf likes to call it, ADP. ADP. The uh, anti-disaster uh, protocol. They need that for Blacklist. They just have to secure their jungle now. Oh, close. At this point, Blacklist does not have the right to team fight. Oh, Edward sends it. Shenan's Aqua almost caught him. Yeah, Vengeance oh, no. already popped here That's for Edward and uh, not still recovering with the HP regen that he has. RSG up ahead by 1.9. Light pops the Circling Eagle, catches a one. Since he's still in the bush, they back off. Oh. It's going to be a bad scenario now for Edward because... Uh, you kind of want to tank up at this point. You're, you don't have your item yet, and you don't have Vengeance for 46 seconds. And that meant that um, there could always be a potential for a team fight, especially because the turtle is spawning in 22 seconds. Yeah. That means that there's, there's a 10-second window when you don't have your battle spell as the EXP laner. Yeah, they got to stall that out if they want a fully powered Edward by the time that turtle spawns. But it looks like Blacklist International will be the one going first dibs around this turtle pit. But Demon Kite and Nats, Nats already lurking around the corner looking for a potential play. It seems like the play for Blacklist is to try and delay that 10 mi second window. And already, look, Edward is five seconds away. I wonder if this is enough. They're pushing away the thumbs. So that means RSG gets free pick and second turtle going their way. And uh, some signs of the ADP, the anti-disaster protocol for Blacklist, they did not fight. They focus on their own jungle. And they're taking as much creeps as the, as much creeps and minions as they can. Do not, you know, cut your losses if you're Blacklist International. Don't try to be anxious to get back. Yeah, and now Sensui might just be in a 2v1 scenario here, but Light decides to back out. 2.2k for RSG, Retribution is used, but Guiding Wind just cancels everything out. All right, uh, low risk play by uh, Black International again. Sensui sending a message saying, you know what, I am not afraid of you, and I know exactly what you're doing. Blacklist is going to expectedly stay on their side of the map for a majority yeah. of the next maybe couple more minutes. Yeah, I agree. So this will be a very slow take, unless Light fights a good opening, gets the Circling Eagle uh, Guiding Wind, the Flying Dinosaur combo. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since we last saw that one. And RSG uh, still in the lead, looking for oh. Yui, but looks like he's going to cancel that. Big, big Ooh. trouble here if you're Kusei. They're about to collapse onto them. Top lane, a 1v1, an anime sword fight. Down bottom, though, it looks like Blacklist seems to understand the situation. They look like they were trying to get a gank on to Kusei, but instead happy with that turret instead. Yeah. yeah. This is much expected for Blacklist. The fact that they were able to get a turret into the bottom lane, that's already very good for their squad. And uh, speaking of very good for their squad, RSG still putting down the pressure, still moving forward around the area, just trying to find opportunities where they can find him. And 
Blacklist, I feel like they're slowly being successful in slowing down the pace. Yeah. They're well, making sure that everyone's safe. Well, now that the Flask is available for light, they are going to be aggressive. All the more. Now, they're threatening the purple buff here. There's a Detonus Welcome coming in, getting my belly. Since who is in trouble, certainly goes spent in. The old from Kimpoi, Kimpoi backing up. Oh, hey. baby! <laughs> Serving up a kill to light. And Edward here in between two turrets. Vengeance and all. Quadrant Inferno as well, still suffering two deaths. Top lane, Oheb just working, working, taking turrets. And oh. they're looking for a trade, RNG pushing mid. That was a beautiful final slash coming in from Yue, but sadly wasn't enough. RSG still takes another 1k to their already yeah. big growing gold lead, plus the third turtle of the game. Now they did lose their turret up top, but that's just a, a trade that Blacklist was able to, to take. And this is Demon Kite just making sure and taking full advantage of the big spike of, uh, of light with the flask of the Oasis. Then, actually finding Sinsu with, with the Daytona's welcome to complete the Grand Chef Purple. Oh, here we go. It looks like RSG have had enough of these tier one takes from Blacklist. They are looking to set up a push on to that lane. Oheb and Kimpoy are holding on to. Kusei yeah. and Aqua. Look at Demon Kite from Red the back. The Red Tree. Forcing out an ult. The Red Tree spent in. Sinsui gets a taunt. Kusei looking for low on health targets. They back off. They're eventually going to get the push. Uh, one turret down for the side of Blacklist International. And RSG still keeping the tempo high. Yeah. Still a 4,000 gold lead for them. They're pushing. They're getting, the, they're getting objectives. And it's always good to take out the purple, purple and the orange buff for your opponents because you can uh, create a, an impossible gap between your matchup. And this means that Sinsui will not be able to catch up when it comes to uh, the, the EXP. So they really need to take care of their buffs now. Blacklist International. This, the purple and the orange buff for Blacklist, they're like a, a very important resource. Which explains the four-man commit of the purple exactly. alone. Uh, they're irreconcilable resources. Yeah. There's no way that you lose yours and then go for your opponents safely. Not in this case, not with 5,000 gold behind. Yeah, exactly. and not with the Mathilde there as well. The mobility coming in from RSG is just insane. Nine minutes in, looks like Blackness International will be committing four people into defending this one. Ooh. But Light goes oh my God. Circling Eagle into the back line. Plus the Detonus welcome thrown into the wall. That's Insui very low. Insui surviving one HP. The heal back in off now Edward he's gonna go down light takes him out but the turret still stands oh now, my god aqua one. with a two-man snare it looks like oh right with the flicker plus Nats just dashing on in vengeance on vengeance and then they back Ooh. off eventually the turret once more in their sights RSG R get the objective G is just insane right now uh, look at that sequence coming out from RSG the flying dinosaur we talked about the flicker and the guiding wind already prepped up meant that when Light jumped, there was Demon Kai to also, also follow suit. And even when Sinsui did not die in that first jump coming up from RC, they have zoned out Edward. Edward in a bad spot, they push the turret, and they take the Lord freely. What a great sequence from RSG. Whoa, final slash onto the orange. You were in trouble. Steals away the final slash. Gonna use that to his advantage. The swan song coming in by oh! Aqua. The flicker reposition, spacing them all out pushing them into their base as they back off like a cat with a cucumber. Wow, almost two kills with that ultimate as well. And uh, man, I've never seen a cat with a cucumber. But yeah, me too. I don't know what to say. Well, you Demon see those <laughs> well true. Demon Kite was able to get a retribution over the purple buff of Sensui. And that is going to be a big problem now. That retribution is still available here for Sitsu. He goes in once again. Circling Eagle on the three, knocking him out. The fight continues. Final slash dispositioning. Edward, as he's forced to use the Vengeance and the Cotter Inferno, backing off Ube inside their base. Ooh, that's, that's the saddest form of Ube when you stick together inside your base because you, know, you don't have any other choice. Yep. A 7k gold lead here for RSG, and they're still continuing the siege. What is Blacklist's win condition at this point? Ooh. Gotta defend. Make sure they don't lose any of those these inhibitors in the first Lord fight. That's the first step to their win condition. The next one is rely on Ohem in the late game. Yeah, but the question remains, can it actually Whoa! reach late game? Multiple CC, get in my belly! As Sensui gets thrown into the wall, taken out by Aqua, and in the back line. 
Nat threatened a big CC there, but pulled the trigger, backed out just as quickly, and that's a clean pickoff. RSG yep. inside Blacklist's face. And what made it so clean was Light was able to save his teammate. Even <laughs> already a good shot, uh, a good snag, damn it, from Blacklist onto Demon Kite, but then Light with the Guiding Wind saves him. Uh, perfect game so far here for RSG in Blacklist International. They successfully defend the mid lane, but down bottom lane, RSG goes. Can they actually defend? Flicker in, plus the final slash, and here's the full on collapse. Circle Eagle in, Nats gets punished, taken down by Agent Zero, and now the base. Demon Kite gets shut down by Edward as well. Blacklist with the punish! Blacklist with the punish as they Aqua! All of RSG and Aqua with the answer back. The Swan Song looking for the wipeout. Down he goes. Blacklist kicks him out successfully. It's just light. He stayed a little too long looking for the taunt. And there's the damage. The wipeout. The wipeout. Blacklist International. They successfully defend two turrets and take back a 9k gold lead, trim it down to 3.5. Might even trim it down even longer because now they'll be able to get out of their base, clear some minions, maybe eventually get some of their perp or some of their buffs and position themselves around the Lord. What a great defense and we're going to see through the replay the over aggression from RSG. We are going to see it in action. Yeah, and and look at this juggle. Insane damage coming in from the Swan Song, but sadly, this wasn't enough for those two kills. I'd say the straw that broke the camel's back was them staying underneath tier three a little too long, thinking that Blacklist already ran out of tricks. We would not have gotten to that last replay without that first moment happening yet, because RSG was already down two members. Uh, three. Yeah. Oh, you have missed the final slash. That's an ultimate. Oh no. Down. Demon kite. Trying to tank a lot of damage here. Here comes Light with the flight. Demon Kite misses. The detone is welcome. It now looks like. Oh! One more. Final slash on the one. Sensui ran through that wall. And just like that, we're back to the dance. Now the dance continues. Slow, slow dance here coming in from Blacklist and RSG. Blacklist pulls them to their side, but Demon Kite is able to stay with the Lord. Who will fall down first? Waiting for key ults to come out. Oh, down. final what? flash from Nats. And there we go. The collapse. U is down. Oh, another one goes. Light takes out Oheb. Kusei takes out Kim Boy. And look at Agent Zero in the back, struggling, clawing his way out. It's just in Sui left. One for four. 2K for Kusei. And now the Lord scored by RSG. Two, one, and ten on Nats. The legend killer. Nats Entertainment with his undefeated Arlen. And what about that play? You saw the huge flicker from the left side after the guiding wind, catching Blacklist off guard. And now the call, it's endable. RSG take game one. Nats Arlet remains undefeated as they take game number one. What a great win coming in from RSG. Yeah. Yeah. An electrifying finish from the undefeated Arlot. 13 and 0 so far for Nats' Arlot. And how about that? Blacklist International was stunned because of that initiation coming out from Light. Instead of bringing in Demon Kite, it was Nats. And it was from the far left and then Flicker final slash to catch, what, three members of Blacklist International off guard. That is poetry in action, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. The team fighting coming in from today's series. Uh, we go back in Series 1, now in Series 2, our star match of the day. All of the team fights that we watched so far has been spectacular in terms of uh, the way that they fight each other. You know how we always ask, how do we define victory? I'd like to say, even from the bottom, Omega and TNC, they have their own play style. Here in the middle, as we struggle to figure out who's going to be going off week in, week out, they have their own flavor. What more when we get to see again uh -huh. those top three, top four teams exactly. battle out? This is amazing. It is amazing. Like uh, the high level of the mechanics that we see from the teams and even the defense from a Blacklist International, knowing that they're already behind by so much, but they still are able to defend. There's just so much going on. But in the end, the MVP is Mr. Aqua. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness. How do you even nitpick who is the real game changer in this game. Surely we'll give the MVP to the Aqua, but Light had his own um, moments in this game. Demon Kite had his own moments. 
But we have to really bask in the glory of this Odette pick coming out from Aqua. 7, 2, and 6. 81% kill participation and a whole lot of damage as we saw from this lethal ignition Odette. The way that he positioned himself in the team fights, very important as well to pop the flicker in the correct moment. There's one time that he's able to be uh, to take out the uh, important members of the side of Blackest International and also supplement the damage in the early stages, right? Because we know the thing with the with the Roger, especially because he's playing the, the far left uh, right side of the map, uh, the first turtle fight, you saw how Apple managed to deal the important damage coming out from RSG. And you can see, Light is still level 3 at this point. They will get a kill onto Edward, eventually onto Yue. That's the follow-up with the Flicker coming out from Aqua. And the over-aggression that we are going to see, RSG. This is not the over-aggression, I mean. Demon Kite being saved by Siemens. This is the over-aggression that we're talking about. I think that um, Nats kind of wanted to dash to the right side, but he ended up going to Kimpoi. And that actually um, did not bode well for RSG. Eventually, RSG will lose so much from this team fight, but then Aqua makes his own moment. Utilizing the ultimate and catching four members of Blacklist, eventually taking out one will not be enough. Light tried to go for the play, but Yue popped his own Circling Eagle in that moment. A very extended team fight. But in comes the fight that spelled the Doom. Nats already utilized the Flicker final slash play. Could have sworn that was a very good initiation coming out from Light. Instead of taking Demon Kite, it's like RSG conditioned Blacklist International that the recipient of the Guiding Wind is going to be Demon Kite, but that, at, uh, but that last moment, it was eventually Nats who took over. Wow. The conditioning coming in from RSG towards Blacklist International, uh, catching them off guard with that uh, flying Arlet yeah. definitely gave them that win in that team fight alone. RSG in this 15-minute game against Blacklist. Let's run down the stats. Yep. The most important one is the control of the turtles. Three turtles for Black uh, for RSG, especially the first one, and then there was a complete snowball. Blacklist International tried to uh, handle the situation by tanking up with the Garas as well as Athena Shield on multiple members of their squad, but it wasn't enough. And even the Flask of the Oasis. And like we said, Blacklist International with their draft, Rafael plus Clint, Rafael plus Frederick, they had to take over in the early stages of the game. They cannot let RSG take over the tempo because it's going to be very difficult for them to kind of put their uh, put their lineup and try to win it in the latter portions. And that is unfortunately what happened. When it comes to the other stats we're talking about, Aqua dealt the most damage, 70k in this 14 or 15 minute game. Damage taken obviously is Edward. But then you also have to take note of Light. 13 total assists out of the 16 kills that RSG had, very impactful. And now we have unraveled. The Matilda once again. Yeah. It's a 9 out of 10. You know what else is ridiculous? The Thank fact you. that it's Blacklist who has the Rafaela, but it's RSU healed more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the healing coming in from the Mathilda, team-wide healing with the Guiding Wind. Uh, I would say that the, this has been uh, not just an amazing Mathilda day, but also an amazing day for team fighting because who would have thought starting week number four, we would see Mathilda twice. We rarely see Mathilda these days. Yeah, it's always bad now. I guess because Chip took over, like there's mm -hmm. a, an extra slot. Uh, Baksha also gets banned Baksha now. Also. And by the way, Novaria, nobody likes Novaria anymore. Why? Anymore. Like, uh, for, like for I don't want to play with you anymore. Yeah, okay. like uh, like that, that meme. That meme. Like, <laughs> yeah. Pick up the Matilda, yeah. Novaria. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm, maybe the Chip has been looks maxing, you know? Yeah. I'm, been I'm, mewing for two weeks now, and now he's uh he's just Sigma. I'm upset because I don't get the gas but five man astral recalls anymore. Astral re echoes, rather. You know? Yeah, I miss those astral echoes as well, but maybe you'd see it only in Ohio. Face technician chip is now available with teleportation at your fingertips in portals, offering endless possibilities. Come join the game and develop your own unique strategy. Get the hero in skin for only, get this, 469 diamonds in a bundle during the launch week. And uh, moving back to this game, the chip definitely did suffer for majority of the games that we watched so far. Every time we see the chip ban, what is what makes chip bannable to begin with? Uh, it's a global presence, number one. And that, I think the reason why in the first week that he is available, people started uh, did not start to pick that up. Maybe because they haven't figured out the meta yet. They haven't Flash. figured out the, the most optimal item buildup. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
when te teams uh, play in the tournament mode, right? They, they scream in that way. And I believe that um, you cannot pick up the chip prior to when he's available to the MPL in scrims, right? Yeah. Even in scrims, that's what I'm trying to say. So people have not really optimized the hero, but after a week that he's available, now they know how to utilize it. You go yeah. tanky build up, you take advantage of the portals, and you take over the map. Yeah, smart usage on that ultimate and smart usage on the portals. And before we head on to our next game, we want to give a huge shout out to our official sponsor, Smart. Be part of digital transformation in the world of connectivity. Say hello to convenience, flexibility, and local connectivity with the Smart Free Babies. Now available for digital delivery through the Smart Online Store for only 99 pesos. Lu Yi is another hero that we've talked about in terms of teleportation. We've seen a lot of Lu Yi's last week, but this time around we have not seen a Lu Yi game just yet. Uh, I'm waiting for it. Hopefully we see it next game. You, you need it. I need it. Yeah. I, think, I need uh, her. I think Lu Yi... Um, <laughs> Like the hottest picks, right? The hottest pick, yeah, uh, the hottest so pick. The hottest pick of the mage. But yeah, I think uh, specifically for Lu Yi, you need a plus one. It's not a. Lu Yi is not a, an a la carte. Uh -huh. uh -huh. she, she doesn't solve she problems. She a whole ass combo meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need a, you need a combo meal. You need a drink. Get a drink. And now we're now looking for the smart game face of the day. MPL Arena. Be the next smart game face of the day winner. Just flash the hashtag, the power of smart, much like Auntie Anara Chantel and Butters are doing here on your devices with a green background and put your game face on to win a redeemable in-game code. But right now that we're not in the camera, what's your game face? I'm doing it right now. <laughs> there it is. Wolf, Wolf, show me your game face. The audience is not ready for that. But congratulations to this RSG fan right now in MPL Arena for winning our game face of the day. And uh, it's such a blessing that the camera wasn't on us when you made your game face, yeah. Wolf. Y'all wouldn't rare, have, I wasn't item. prepared to see that. It's a rare item. Hopefully, if ever uh, we do see a. Uh, I would. What would uh, make you show it to the people? Uh, Name your price. Name, Name your price. Uh, it's not a problem. I, I want to see Omega vs. CNC in the Grand Finals. Who knows? But you know, uh, I, I would want to know what Nats is thinking right now. So, Nats, how about you take it away? Mm, M5. Because, ay, M M5. Tuloy. M series. Because I really wanted to go to the next one. I wanted to go to the next one. I wanted to go to the Parang sabi ko, pag nakatapa ko din sa M-Series talaga. Or kahit makapasok man lang, kahit parang bala na kung bibigay sa amin yung champion o hindi. Basta gusto gusto makapasok talaga ng M-Series kasi yun talaga yung dream ko eh. Um, wala akong inspiration talaga, sarili ko lang. Wow. wow. Uh, his inspiration wow. is himself. Respect. Respect. And of course, the M series dream is uh, something that all of our players share. Um, I do think that it is also mentioned by H2 in the interview from last series, but this time it's mentioned once again for Nats. I feel like if we go into the head of every pro player, M series something is uh, is yeah. really something uh, down the line for them. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's like a, it's like it's a pinnacle. For the teacher, especially now that we are seeing some uh, increase in the prize pool of oh, our wow. international events, huge, yep, huge, huge increase, increase. yeah, so unprecedented. Are, that's right, ginormous, yeah, enormous, anti anara like, colossal, yeah. colossal, you know, so Naisu esque, Naisu esque, you know, those are some words that we would describe the MSC prize pool, which is upcoming. And in terms of MSC, I do think that RSG for some reason. On seasons before MSC, they always perform the best. You know what? They just always perform. Ever since their winning season nine, they've never stepped lower than top Third. four. Oh uh -huh. yeah, that top four. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, which is interesting because um, it means that the pandamentals it works. You know? Yeah, and uh, not just the pandamentals, but also the culture that RSG Philippines is built all around their players and I heard that they have very balanced schedules that they have time for for exercise time for good food time for bonding and now it's time for drafting as we see the Mathilda getting banned for the side of RSG Philippines yep. now Blacklist Five, International three, taking away the chip once again and together and with the Masha those are all rovers yep I take away the Heroes for light, but that does. I will choose. But you know, we, we know that light can play so many heroes. Like he's uh, also 
oh, uh, player that can play both of both the utility roamers as well as the setup roamers. But then you have to ask, what is a first pick worthy hero now for Blacklist? Should it be Nolan? And I think it's a it's a very uh, tempting pickup for Blacklist, especially because Minotaur and Matilda are both banned already. Yeah, and the joy is open as well in case they really want to play with an assassin. But Nolan is something that uh, Sensui specializes in. I'd like to believe that ever since Nolan was available to play, Sensui has been one of the first to actually play him the most. Yep. So I think and uh, what if Valentina is the ban for RSG? They let the Nolan and the joy open. So, so when Nolan, box. so they can trade. They no box, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the this should be Nolan, right? Yeah. Nolan could be the pick here, but in terms of tank junglers, Fredrin and a box, uh, Fredrin and Barrett's are still open yep. in case they want to fight this Nolan with a utility jungler. Yep. And then if you're RSG, you pick up Angela immediately, and then maybe reserve the joy for the third pick. Perhaps get what CC. CC Angela, oh, so very yeah. strong good. I hate that. CC Angela is just so good in terms of like sustain and damage. Yeah. It's so hard to kill the CC. Exactly. Even the Nolan would struggle. Yep. Yeah. And overall, that vengeance has been a big, uh, a big factor as well for XP laners. For XP laners who can pick up the vengeance, it also counters out the carry picks and the clawed picks, especially the clawed picks. Yeah. And then, if you're thinking about it, like. Oh, it doesn't really reveal anything to your draft, so they go Frederick instead. <laughs> and should. Red Farmers, okay. Uh, a tamed version of to the CC Angela. Is to yeah. trick uh, the it is what it is. Looks like they're going to go for team fighting instead. We did see this similar drafting pattern from our uh, first series of the day. That's right. Getting Smart the Frederick first and uh, uh, pairing it up with a Faramis. Yeah. No blacklist can just go for. I might not be well. a lighted man, but I know my traits. <laughs> Pirates Ruby. <laughs> this still doesn't. Pirates Ruby. This still doesn't uh, reveal what goes into the roam, by the way. From me. What is uh, happening? I feel, I feel like this is going to be a Rome Ruby with a XP Lane Barretts. Uh, I, I respect oh. XP Lane Barretts a lot. Like it's it really deals a lot of damage. Oh, oh yeah, no, there's a load on that. Never mind. Yep, definitely. Man, okay, that is, uh, that's weird. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's what threw me off. I'm like, yeah. why would you lean that hard into a yeah. first pick Nolan anyways? That means that uh, I, Nothing beats you the go Roger, right? Rush. You take Benedetta, their RSG, just dive and dive. Ah, uh, well, looks like this Benedetta will be going to the hands of Nats. If we're talking about the XP laners in this match alone, it's Edward and Nats, both oh. known for their Benedetta plays. If we look back in Season 12 playoffs, the last game played by RSG Philippines was with Nats, Benedetta, that almost yeah. won them the game. Valentina and Lilia, two heroes that can be banned out by RSG. Specifically Valentina, because you don't, you, you don't want to give both the Valentina, the, the Faramis ultimate with the bats. It's just now difficult for them to be taken out. I'd say juke him. Like, don't ban the Valentina first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah give him false hope. Yeah, Lilia, maybe. The yeah. First ban. Oh, let's see which one will be the ban here for the side of RSG. Oh, it looks they're... like they're going to take away the Valentina. No juking yep. nope. allowed. Nothing. Honesty is the best policy for RSG. I agree. I'm being honest right now. I'm still kind of confused in how they're going to clear a lot of waves here. If you're Blacklist International, hopefully they get uh, some sort of wave clear entering yeah. the next phase. They went in too deep with the, with the dive. Yeah. I think I um, might go for uh, Novaria, perhaps, mm -hmm. for a Blacklist. There's been an odd absence of Novaria and Claude. Yeah. That's true. It's like... Uh, do they find the Claude here? Or do they pick up the Claude themselves, RSG? They should. Because the... Uh, the way that you're banning if you're Blacklist International, you really want to go for the Claude, right? Claude uh -huh. is countered by the Grok. Chase the stars. And, and now they're going to take away the Lu Yi. What a okay. shame. Sad last, warmy noises. Last, Sad warmy noises. Last pit ban here by the side of Blacklist International. Yeah. Quit crying. Maybe, I'm uh, crying, bro. Ty Grill, perhaps. It is what it is. Or Angelo. Waiting for that new hero. What uh, I think uh, the one with the knockups, the queen of uh, future queen of knockups. She's uh, not here yet. She's not even here yet. But you know, looking at the all-time MPLPH hero leader, 18 times played by Edward the Bar. 18 times? That's a career all-time high. Look at that. This was when Barrett was played in the uh, side lane. No ex. 
It's not even called the XP yet. 15 and 3. Oh, wow. Uh, it's like a long oh, no, no, no. time. If I'm not mistaken, it was already the, the XP. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Right, right. It was already Supposed the XP. Too. Yeah. And that was when uh, Barrett still didn't have a dash. For the ult, yes. For the ultimate. All the Detona's welcome was stay in front of me and I will eat you. Yeah. His tongue is what goes out. Yeah, it's tongue. Yeah. The tongue game is strong, my brother. Okay. For RSG, you need a marksman as well as a roamer. And you need maybe Tigreal for RSG? Uh, Maybe the roam. Maybe the marksman first. Yep. The marksman first. Like a or, is, or is the Claude such a threat? Maybe we're the ones who's hyper fixated on the Claude. Random yeah. swerve. What Let if they go diggy? Oh, a Harith instead. Harith locked in for the yeah. gold lane. They still have the choice here to get a big, big roamer. Yeah. And then for Blacklist, do they pick up... Is this a golden ruby again? Oh, God. Wait, there's no reason to. Because your jungler's a Nolan. That's true. That's it. Uh, who okay. knows, though? It's very, it's very what, 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 what if, if Freya, maybe? What if Coach Bonchan is onto something that we can't even begin to understand? Yeah. Five hit what, plays. What, what if he goes to the Quantum Realm, sees the future, and yeah. just says, you know what, Gold Lane Ruby will win us this game? Lilia Freya, perhaps? Or whoa, 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 Nana? Whoa. No, Nana's good, actually. Yeah, I think for Black Mist. Nana's great. Uh, and then a traditional Gold Laner. A traditional yeah. Gold Laner. Let's see, two seconds more. I see the oh. Oh, okay. Here comes the Nathan Nana combo. The Nathan. The Nathan. The Nathan. The Nathan. That's right. With the Nolan. With Time the no traveling Leonin. Nana no. That's no a lot of team fighting. Yeah, for sure. That is a lot of team fighting That's if you're blacklisted in national. Super late game based. Good try, good try. Yeah. Thank you. So, for our so you're looking for a low cooldown um, roamer. That has a lot of impact in the early stages. What else is this? Is so Cho, easy to perhaps? punish. Yeah, no, blacklist lineup. I agree, man. It's so, it's 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 a little greed, you know. Yeah, so, give me the diggy. I want to diggy. see the diggy. Or or maybe a tiger actually Papa for Wolf. RSG. <laughs> I want to see the diggy. Oh no! no. Wait, the injustice in the man, you, uh, I. I told you! This is a light. But classic. Papa Wolf! Why that's did they a, pick the Cho? That's, they a, need that's, a, a, that's an unravel hero right there. An unravel hero. Why, is, why did the Cho make a lot of sense? Because, like I said, you need an um, impactful hero, low cooldown. The stumps are low cooldown, yep. technically uh -huh. speaking. Level 2, you can start messing with the Nolan. Exactly. Yeah. And with the Benedetta as well, you have like such a dynamic duo. I'm not saying a dynamic duo outside of the game, but such a dynamic duo where they could just go all out by level one. Exactly. Level two even more so. And now Blacklist International, they face another worrying game number two where they might not even score a point. And this has been happening since last week. And for RSG, it's such a different story. They could get another sweep if they win game two. Yeah. A lot on the line here for both teams. Fundamentally speaking, Blacks International have bitten off more than they could chew, especially with the response from RSG in the draft. Yeah. But, but if their mechanics are on point and if they can get the macro to work for them, at least for the first five or six minutes and they don't get punished hard, they might be onto something. Yeah, and hopefully that something gives them a game number three because we are in game number two of this best of three series. RSG is one win away from another sweep from their undefeated week three run. Three game streak three game. sweep, y'all. And that's just like Onyx Philippines, man. They, they've been getting sweep after sweep and RSG is starting to take stride. And I think the Cho has been uh, picked quite lowly for the past few weeks, but this time around, in the hands of light, I'm quite excited to see a lot of plays. Who would have thought that season 13, we're gonna see a Barretts versus Benedetta lane. After a very, very long time that we have not seen that, Is right? this the second or third XP lane, Barats? I'm not even sure. It's, yeah. it's always been thrown around. Yep. I think such it might a, be second. Such a big pickup right now. Oh, and it was RSG who did it the first time then. Exactly. Under Nibor. Yeah, and I remember RSG just getting a lot of firsts as well. Remember when Ixchel was a new hero? RSG was the first to pick him up as well. That was him, so, man. They were really n not shying away from experimenting inside of the regular season. Blacklist International still looking for uh, 
the, the heroes around for RSG. They can't even move forward. Yeah, no, this is good timing for Black, oddly enough to say, is because as long as nothing bad is happening to Blacklist, Blacklist will just keep chugging yes. along, build up that momentum, build up the XP and the gold they need. Yep, that's very true for the Nolan and Nathan, because both of them are, uh, they, they kind of sound as if the time travelers. And they need time. That's the thing. Well, force out a flicker from Edward. Nats displaced. Man, what a and they back off. What a godly gift from you with catching two of the heroes of RSG. Yeah. My oh my. Totoros, bro. Yep. Now Demon Kite starting this turtle. Half HP. Edward already getting the aggro as well. Here we go. Four v four. Turtle gets soft reset. Molina's just set in, plus the dive. Sensui with a sharp retribution, as always. Yeehaw. Big Bonk tailing in. Kimpoi gets taken out by the light. It's lights out. Nasty oh. out, XP for Rome. And there's a kick. Dragon's way coming in. Sensui taken down by Aqua. And just like that, RSG trade out two for one, plus the turtle going blacklist. Yep. Blacklist International securing the first objective. Who won that trade? Uh, I think RSG, uh, especially because they have taken out since we now they can uh, get more jungle creeps. I like the fact that um, uh, Dragon's Way was seen like that. You see, like they seen uh, Flaker, but Aqua also utilized the Purify to cancel the welcome of Daytona. Yeah. Uh, did you just say Dragon Wage? Dragon's Way. Wave the Dragon. We talking about Dragon Wage? Dragon's Way. Oh, uh, oh, Dragon's Way. Okay, yes. I thought it, you said Dragon's Wage. Yeah. Because that would be, um, yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. But anyway, Blacklist <laughs> International, okay. now 300 okay. gold ahead. Yeah. Still looking for ways to slow down the game. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the win condition here for Blacklist International is to just wait for the late game, you know, yes. the power spike of this data. Yes, absolutely. Nathan and Nolan, very good at the late game. Every time, every minute that they survive with Sensui farming, just uh, just kind of compounds once again, and eventually there will not be enough Whoa. damage from RSG. I'm offended from Kimpoi helping secure that small objective, and now it is a full-on team fight. Looking for a Shadow Stampede, Kimpoi down to a fifth of his health. He backs off, and as Eliza says, he stays alive. Staying alive. Wrong in staying alive. Oh, no. wrong staying alive. My bad. It's 10 seconds from now, the turtle will be spawning. That will be the second turtle of the game. Looks like uh, Blacklist International has good control over that area, but Light looking for a possible kick out, but he doesn't really find anyone. Nats now cutting the lane. Edward waiting for him to show up in that L bush. Here we go. The dance. Kimpoi begins. More like a little shuffle. It's not a full on dance as turtle just yet. 3v3, as we see, slowly collapses on 4v4, Light taking control of this river bush, uh -huh. finds one, setting up the kick against Yue, does not pull the trigger quite yet. Oh, yeah. oh, heb. oh wow! Single-handedly almost taken out Light, and now it's a 5v4, and now I like the final blow spent in by Nat. Petrify! Dashing in, dashing out, looking for the Petrify, and boom! Down goes Oheb, Kuzai takes him out. One for one now, Nat traded out for the Turtle, and now Edward very low. Can Aqua burst him down? No one left in the back lines. Oh, RSG just leaning hard into this. Oh, They steal away the orange. Oh no, Sensui secures. Yeah, with the retribution as well, but with the retribution used, he might not be able to protect his purple oh, buff. That's gonna be tough. RSG take out a tier one in mid. That's a main artery, penetrated. It's gonna be much harder for Blacklist to stay alive. Right, right. Okay, gets found out here by Kim Poi. And now for Blacklist with the main artery in mid lane already punctured by RSG. How can oh. Blacklist slow this down? Well, they have to just clear out the way. So focus on uh, trying to win, oh, or at least uh, stay, uh, get a stalemate on the minion waves. Clear it out with OF's range as well as UW's range. Allow um, Sintsui to just farm the jungle. And that so far is being stopped by light. This is the also part of the reason why they pick up the Cho. Because the Cho can spot out where Sensui will be. And the way of or Dragon's Way is a guaranteed stun as well. You yeah. got it right the first time. Yeah, yeah you, you already got it on. Whoa, 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 whoa! Kusei drops a summon force. In a defensive manner, there's a taunt, there's the knock up. Edward, Edward looking for a detonus welcome. They back off. Now, with a four man push here coming in from the side of RSG. Will they be able to take down this tier one turret up top?
Demon Kite already provided a lot of pressure Watch in up, the back line, but Nats with the Spinadetta might just Ooh, go all in. Huge flank oh, and the collapse, yeah. the ult from Oheb Kimpoi. Playing with range, they have to surrender. They concede the top lane tier one. Oh, but look at bottom lane. Oh, that's a push by Sensui. He's split pushing. Now Nat, Whoa! mid. You are still alive, but with a passive, just barely. Oh my Nat God! Gets two. A Nat gets two. Gets eaten up by Edward, looking for the punish. The kick by Light. Nat's taken down. Here comes the cavalry. Edward, is he enough? The Zaman Force dropped in, can't make it like Jackie Chan. I want no trouble, he gets knocked out. Are you kidding me? Nats again, outplaying two members of Blacklist, technically taking out three heroes because that includes the passive of the Nana with a wonderfully utilized dash. That was Nats. That was that Nats. Was that was Nats, I mean, very much on point with the blades. That's oh. Nats. Nats Entertainment online already. And you can see the micro in this XP laner has only been sharper and sharper every season in. And right now, Man. I think we're looking at Prime Nathaniel. Oh, that puts him about two and a half, three thousand gold ahead under eight minutes. And I'd say it's 50% mission accomplished for Blacks International. It could have been worse. Could've it been could worse. have been worse. But right now, I think RSG have found their Power spike, TM. Yeah. Like this is power it. Spike, TM. Oh, this is just the power spike. Nats has been mewing for three months, and now he's just showing everybody <laughs> how a looks maxed Benedetta could perform. Looking like Lord Farquaad. <laughs> yeah. That reveals three heroes up top. Demon Kite is now really very aggressive. Look at this bot lane as well being huh? sieged by RSG. <laughs> On two fronts. Is it Nats 3v1? Yes, baby. Yes. Oh, oh, don't call man. me baby. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you mean it. We'll talk later. We'll, we'll talk, talk later. later. <laughs> Moving forward, we have a minute before the first Lord spawns. Can RSG take this down for themselves or, or should Blacklist even contest? Uh, no, I don't think a contention is actually available for Blacklist at this point. Not an option. <laughs> Not an option. They just have to defend. Still look into the late game. At this point, RSG's power spike is nigh unbeatable. But if they stay under their turrets, the safety of their turrets, punish RSG once again, they might have a shot. We talked about the late game. How late are we talking about? How many more minutes can uh, Blacklist last, or should Blacklist last, for this to be an even game? 18 minutes to 23. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Especially when RSG is doing this, look at... Oh no, the Entropy already early spent! And they're collapsing onto them. They're waiting, weaving in and out. Sensui taking that bush. And just like that, they're just forcing ults. I'm, I'm sensing it. RSG is just forcing ults. Yep. Yeah. Gotta be very happy about that. That means that they're even more confident taking this Lord fight. And Nats already prepping up the lane up top. The long lane, getting controlled by Nats. Short lane already controlled by RSG, so... This definitely is RSG sided. Yeah, and uh, looking at uh, the pressure coming in from this Benedetta, the conceal is played. Light catches Here's one. Way of the dragon on to Kimpoi. Lights out for him. Kusei gets the kill. And now they're scrambled. Edward doesn't know where to go. Flicker on now. This place taken Kite. down. Diamond gets one. Demon Kite gets one. Oheb not knowing where it all went wrong. And it's a pickoff. Three for none, RSG in control. And this might just be a free lord as well for the Raiders. Blacklist International, do they have what it takes to defend against a potential big lord push? Ooh. What a fight once again coming out from RSG. And this time it's Demon Kite that took over. Way that they handle the situation, going for the back lines. Also, for Light to decide to utilize the Flicker way of the Dragon combo onto Kimpoi instead of looking for Oheb and Sensui, that's a very interesting decision because we know that Arshi has a lot of uh, utilities anyways to get into the back lines. So it kind of is a switch up. And for RSG, for games one and two, it's all about conditioning Blacklist International, then mixing up their 
uh, their approach afterwards, which kind of puts Blacklist in a spot where they're always guessing uh, what RC is going to do. Lord marching down mid lane, and you have the Benedetta cutting the lane as well on the top side. Might just be a perfect flow here coming in from RSG, but bot lane seems to be there early. Pops the purification coming in from the bottom lane turret, and now the Lord knocks on their door. Oh, Nat spawning on Tinsui. Difficult to clear a wave as a lone no, uh, Nolan, and now the defense continues oh, just as well as RSG sync the waves. Blacklist actually made the most of their firepower yeah. as well. That's <laughs> impressive. That's very impressive, actually. The way that, well, this is the strength of the Nana. Then you couple it with the uh, Nathan. Uh, very underrated when it comes to defenses because oh. of skill one and skill two. Light. Light, looking for it. The conceal play. I like the final blow. Placed right behind Stop. the turret. Can't even think about defending. Now bottom lane up next. RSG, very disciplined approach. Yeah. That was clean from RSG. Clean. Wow. That was, uh, that was a good electo, uh, electo final blow coming in from Nats, making sure that uh, they had the space to take down the inhibitor turret. You could eat a salad off that attack. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. That was so clean. That was so clean. I eat salads. You Really? Well, yeah. name three salads. Caesar salad, uh, fruit salad. <laughs> Thousand Island. Thousand Island. Thousand Island. <laughs> Well, <laughs> for, for the people uh, watching right now, how about you name three salads? Yeah. And um, of course, don't forget to follow the, the broadcast as well. And 13 minutes in, RSG is now ahead by 6,000 gold against Blacklist International with almost, I would say, Light is being overshadowed here by Nats, but Light has been performing really well as well. I mean, between them, it's Nat who's more willing to trade because Light is the one who can actually confirm kills. Oh Nat no. just oh scrambles no. him. Wait, wait, wait. Oh wait. no! Tensui gets spotted! Oh no. There's the kick! There's the summon force, but Tensui gets away. Look at the back! Tensui wow. taken down God. by Nat! Oh, he follows through, and we're down as well! Kimpoi and Yue, Yue and Kimpoi, the only ones left! Mm. And it's just Yue! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, five on one! RSG, they can finish this right here, right now. Three men petrify. Can you defend this? Oh, that's it. That's it. Ring the bell. RSG, take the series. Oh my god. I mean, sure. Light utilizing the way of the dragon and hiding in that bush. Very smart. Very calculated. But nuts. Are you kidding me? Hyper aware. Oh my goodness, the incredible Nats. It, it is what it is. A three man petrify from the Benedetta ends that team fight. And wow, the show coming in from RSG in this match is definitely head turning. Yep. If you're an MPL fan, RSG is on to your favorite team yep. already 3 and 0 in their last matches. Now, if you're a Blacklist fan, you're hoping that they learned a lot more yep. from that loss. Because again, this is a match that they clearly stated, we're going to have Haji study too. We're going to have Haji build up into yep. a shot caller. And that's what I'm hoping they walked away here with, yep. even yep. with no points. Yep. Yep. And hopefully, uh, Blacklist International, they bounce back. But of course, the fans still showing love for the Blacklist International organization yep. here as they walk out of the arena. This has been a struggle for them since week number three, but they still have matches left in yep. this week number four. We will be waiting for their uh, potential comeback in the future. For now, we will be talking to our victors, RSG Philippines, with our hosts, Mara Aquino and Hans Galleria. All right, everybody, let me hear it from you. GG. GG, RSG, congratulations. All right. Sinasabi ni ko sa dito daw sila sa side ko kasi ni-interview mo daw sila. This time I want to give it to Aqua. Aqua napakaganda ng performance mo. Nung game number one. My goodness, it's also the debut pick ng Odette this season. At sobrang dami nung nag-aproba nung Odette mo kanina. How does it feel to use it? Ano bang ano bang tumatakbo sa utak mo lalo na nung double kill counter attack mo all throughout that bot lane during the last moment? Ah, ano, ah, nangi ah, parang nagigil na ako ilabas yung hero na yun eh, kaya yun, ginamit ko. Oy, proud ako sa kanya, hindi niya na sinabi na chamba lang. Oo, oh, diba? oh, nice. Ang mahalaga, sabi niya, nanggigigil na siyang ilabas Pumaba. yung Odette. 
Pero ano nga ba yung mga tips mo sa mga gagamit ng Kodet sa RG? What tips can you give us para mas gumaling sa RG? Tips daw, tips daw. Mamigay ka naman. Uh, wala ko ma may isip eh. Uh, ulti lang ba sa ano, pag yung mga walang panghuli yung kalaban, pwedeng gamitin. Alright. So pag ubos na daw yung skills, go time na yun. Yun na yun. That's the tip. Pero ang go time din natin kay Coach Panda para ma-rate ang performance niya kanyang team kasi All nakalabo right. na nila lahat ng team sa ating first half of the regular season. So how would you rate how, you, how your team is performing so far, especially this game? Seven. Bakit seven? But kulang ng three? Um, like sa game one, we couldn't end in the game maayos. Tapos sa game two, we could have done better sa mga turtle moment tapos more tapang. So, we need to more polish yung mga aggressive uh, game style natin. So, kaya seven. Kaya seven. May, may konting kulang pa. But at least there's always gonna be room for improvement, Coach. Congratulations. This time, for the MVP of game number two, it is none other. Sino ba ba? Nats once again. Nats Entertainment! I, can, I cannot Three believe straight. it. Three th straight! I think this is the third straight time, gaya nga nang nabanggit mo. So, Nats, how does it feel na ikaw yung isa sa mga pinakamalaking factors towards why RSG has been performing this well? And what else do you look forward to since nakalaban nyo na silang lahat? Anong improvements na makikita natin for you sa second matchup nyo kontra sa kanila? Uh, yung matchups nyo, nakalaban nyo na lahat ng teams, right? So, anong mga adjustments yung sa... What would we see from RSG the second time na makikita nyo sila ulit? Um, yung sa mga losses po namin na uh, mga last week po ata is talagang natuto po kami dun and talagang we improve ourselves talaga. At sa ngayon performance po namin is masaya po ako sa lahat. Kasi sa team rin, nag a sila yung nag hard work sa lahat ng ginagawa nila now. So sa, uh, sa next match po namin, eh, try pa rin po namin gawin lahat ng makakain namin and try na rin yung best. Masaya din kami sa'yo. And to point out, lahat ng MVP niya, puro Benedetta. Once again, congratulations to RSG Philippines! You may now take your bow and take your walk of victory! Ang lupet ni Nat sa kanyang Benedetta. Feeling ko baka next time maban na to. Feeling ko hindi mapapalitan. You're just gonna have to ban it at some point. Kasi kung ganyan, na ganyan ang performance ng RSG, it's gonna be a little too difficult to stop that team. Masaya sila sa performance ni Nat. Sige natin kung gano'ng kasaya nga ba ang ating mga casters. Let's go to their analysis. Casters, pasa. Thank you so much, Mara and Hans. Going back to the caster desk, we've been talking about how these teams have grown so much. It's no longer just AP, Bren, and Echo. We're also talking about Onik and now RSG on their third sweep since week three. I mean, uh, it's very difficult to describe how good they are because it's like a combination of macro and micro. And definitely the god of micro in this particular game. None other than... Nats himself with his Benedetta. Lethal Ignition, by the way, as the choice for the uh, final emblem, going for the fighter build. Um, and then eventually just uh, picking up the Hepta season, taking over the map afterwards. He died three times in this game. But those deaths always had a positive effect on the side of RSG. Either go for a 2 for one play or a 3 for one play that eventually we saw in this particular game. I'm very, very much excited to look at these Nats plays. Starting from the first turtle fight, where he's able to find Yue. And then eventually overheats. I'm um, gonna be taken out by Sensui, but this already allowed RSG to get into a spot where they can take out Sensui. How about that flicker way of the dragon play coming out from light? We're gonna see more. This is a wonderful outplay onto two under the turret. Look at that masterful usage of the passive of the Benedetta. And then that's, by the way, Kim Boy being taken out by light. Nats going for Sensui once again. He knows his job. Gets out into safety. And we are going to see them take out Edward afterwards. Demon Kite with the bonk onto Oheb. And look at that. Light good, good positioning. But Nats with this three-man Petrify play. That you saw from that one. Not even needing the Electo final blow. That's why he just saw three people. Boom. Goes for the Petrify. Knows his job. And he 
eventually took out the members of Blacklist International. That play alone, ladies and gentlemen, will be filed under MPL vids that go hard. Uh, that play went hard and what went hard as well is that RSG still going for three points and giving Blacklist none. Let's run down the stats with a 13-minute game. I guess uh, if you're looking at Blacklist International, there's a lot of future already that we're seeing. In fact, Oheb had a great shot at taking out Kusei. I saw there was a clash where he was able to manhandle Kusei. But in the second turtle fight, Kusei eventually found the opening with the first pick Starlium Scythe. Very really interesting pick here coming out from Kusei. Typically, we've seen Harith pick up the Thunderbolt for some a little bit of defense. But because of the Starlium Scythe, and knowing that Oheb didn't have both the Purify as well as the Entropy on one clash, he was able to use the Zaman Force and uh, take advantage of the immense amount of damage in a small period of time for this tariff. The, the damage done coming out from RSG is way too much for Blacklist International to handle. It was a it was a massive gamble for Blacklist International going for both Nolan and Nathan, knowing that these are two heroes that require a lot of time and a lot of farm in order for them to be online. But they kind of supplement it with good heroes. They have the Ruby to sustain it, they have the Barrett from the EXP lane, they also have the Nana. However, it wasn't enough. And let's look at the heat map from Light, a very impactful player. The Cho that we thought is uh, off meta but will make sense in this game eventually did make sense because one it kind of takes care of business when it comes to scouting out where since who is farming and second it's a guaranteed stun it's a point and click kind of uh, a pointed tap i guess uh, kind of uh, ultimate where you confirm that kill and uh, confirm that stun and then eventually you saw how impactful it is yeah and we did see that in uh that one last pick off that light did with a spectacular timing as well uh the cho we rarely see that as, as far as i know this is the third time that we saw cho with the uh, amount of games that we've played for the past four weeks already but so far it has been uh such a, a wonderful um experience so far for today after our last game and you too could assemble your own community tournament be a part of e-project esports for everyone and show the world your impeccable esports prowess ensure tournament access mode free in-game items diamonds and more you can register by scanning the qr code below and making tournaments uh making communities this is where it starts you could ask any professional player they have come from somewhere in the realm of amateur tournaments. Yeah. I just say endure. I mean enjoy. Yeah, I yeah. mean I enjoy it. But at this point, we have been your casters for today. My name is Uomi. With me here is Leo and Wolf. This has been a spectacular time with you guys. But we're going to send you over to our hosts, Mara Aquino and Hans Galleria. We just witnessed two quick matches to open the fourth week of the regular season, Hans. You know, that's true, Mara, dahil nakuha na finally ng bagong barangay ang kanilang unang panalo sa tulong ni Okir and H2O. And after that, we also saw RSG prove how they can utilize their power spike further with a surprise Odette pick from Aqua. Well, bukas naman, Mara, tampok sa ating star match ang basagan ng win streak. That's something you watch out for. And that's between AB Brand and Onik. You don't want to miss that out. Muli ako po si Mara Aquino. At ako naman si Hans Galeria. Na nagpapaalalang, magkakaiba man ang ating pinagdadaanan, sama-sama pa rin tayo sa laban para, para sa, sa tagumpay. tagumpay. Keep it good vibes, everybody. And see you tomorrow.